you're on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I like I like the music. Thank I you. mean, I yeah, I get that I'm on, but the music is like good. I like I like bouncing to it. Too good. Uh, anyways, yeah, it is. <laughs> What's up, heathens? How y'all doing? Uh, I'm here tonight with Dr. Joshua Bowen, I guess, to talk about slavery, genocide, all things that the Old Testament says. Maybe, maybe some of the what the New Testament says that you know. I don't know, Dr. Josh. You want to tell everybody who you are, what you do, and why people love to bring up this topic about you? Yeah, or with I mean, I was you, not say, about you, like, but with you. <laughs> apparently, this is just who I am now. You know, I'm the I'm the <laughs> guy that deals with slavery apologists. Uh, not the title. It's not what I thought I was going to be when I was seven, you know, but here we are. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm Dr. Joshua Bowen, uh, PhD in Assyriology with a minor in Hebrew Bible from Johns Hopkins. And, uh, my wife runs Digital Hammurabi. And so this is sort of my role here in the after hours, uh, on, online is to talk apparently about, <laughs> about biblical slavery. <laughs> About biblical slavery. I mean, you got you gotta love it. Uh, you know, being known for just one topic. I mean, you've written a number of other books on a lot of uh, you know wide ranging issues. So, I mean, you're not you're not some kind of one trick pony over there, Doctor Josh. So, uh, but in, in any case, you know, we're here tonight to take your calls and talk about whatever you guys want to talk about as far as like I guess um, you know whether or not God exists or things relating to specifically biblical stuff uh, if there are people that want to call in and talk about you know some other religions i guess we might be able to give you something but um you know both josh and i well josh more so than me uh kind of geared towards you know answering uh re relevant uh, i guess christian questions uh or or just general theistic questions uh, and such. So if you're a theist and you think that God exists, please call in, give us your best reason for why God has to exist or does exist or anything like that. If you think that, uh, Jesus resurrected from the dead, call in with that. We'd love to hear about how a Jew resurrected from the dead magically. Um, just uh, let let us know what you think. Uh, we do have a couple of callers uh, on the line already uh, for us to get to, um, and I don't really have much else to talk about. Do you want to go ahead and just jump into a call there, Josh? Sounds good. All right. Awesome. All right. So I guess we'll start out with <laughs> Emmanuel from Texas. How you doing there, Emmanuel? Uh, we spoke before. Ah, uh, yes, we have. Huh? Hi. Yeah. Yes. Uh, uh, how, how are you guys? Uh, I just want to talk how, how, how much, like, the New Testament is different than the slavery that we actually think. So what I would say is, like, you know, a lot of people misquote the Bible in Ephesians 6, 5, and Colossians 3, 22. So when, uh, when, I, I think... We have to understand the intentions of New Testament writers. So what I think is well, so so uh, let me know, stop Jesus, you right there, Emmanuel. Uh, Emmanuel, Eman Emmanuel, let me I'm stop sorry. you right there because I feel like what you're trying to do is you're trying to separate the New Testament from the Old Testament, as if it's uh, somehow a different God or maybe different in a meaningful way. Um, I, I really don't think that you're going to have a good time with that particular argument. Uh, would you not agree that the God of the Old Testament is the same God of the New Testament? Uh, God, God never changes, but his covenant changes. So the Old Testament teaching, how you get to God, how you become righteous, how, how you know, law and grace is two different things. So the the god of the bible is the okay faith, okay so so but, so uh, emmanuel can we start off maybe we could start off i know dr josh likes to do this uh, a little bit can we start off uh, agreeing then that the old testament covenant with god definitely included chattel slavery where you could buy uh, own and trade people uh as chattel as property so, so, so what, what what I think is uh, specifically it allows. For example, when you look at uh, Exodus twenty one, it's, it's a yes or no question. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, Emmanuel. It's a yes 
yes or no question. It's a yes or no question. Yes or no. The Old Testament covenant with God includes owning and and bartering uh, a whole ass people as chattel as as property. Yes, it, it, it allows it, but it, it's like a, it's a hidden okay. slave. So you, you, you it's can a buy heathens, but they're like idol worshippers. So it's kind of like a revenge for God, basically. Emmanuel, do you want to go to there... do, do you want to go to Exodus twenty one two to six and read it to me? Okay, uh, let me just get my glasses. Just give me a okay. second. Because I think you'll find that uh, chattel slavery doesn't only pertain to the foreigners that you're talking about in Leviticus 25. Okay, so you said Exodus 21, right? Mm-hmm, two to six. Uh, so it says, if you buy a Hebrew servant, he will serve you for six years, and the seventh year he shall go free without paying anything. If he comes alone, he is to go free of load, but if he has a wife, when he comes, she is to go with him. If his master gives him a wife and she bears him sons or daughters, the woman and her children shall belong to her master, and only the man shall go free. But if okay, a so servant pause for just a second. I, I sorry. love my master. I'm sorry, sorry. <laughs> sorry. I, know, I know I told you through okay. six, but just pause there at four. So can you tell me about that okay. woman and her children? So it, it says she ha she she has to be a servant, uh, uh, forever, and she can go free. I think that's the context. So is she a chattel slave? Wait, wait hold on. No, no, she's not a chattel slave. In, in this, context. can you define chattel slave for me? So chattel slavery is like being a, a yoke. Uh, it's like a yoke of slavery. So basically, when we see, uh, you know, First Timothy six, uh, one to two, it says, "For you who who are under the yoke of slavery, obey your masters." So that is chattel slavery. But I don't. Okay, think so chattel slavery. Just say, so, just slavery. so you know, chattel slavery means that it's slavery that is not dependent upon the repayment of the debt. Right, their property. That's what they are. Debt slavery is slavery that is dependent upon the repayment of the debt. So chattel slaves are just property. That's what they are. So, so is so that woman it, it, and the, the woman and the children, is it dependent upon the repayment of a debt? No, no, I don't think it's a repayment of the debt. I don't think that's what it's saying in Exodus 21. But it doesn't show that you she is like a chattel slave. So even if it was a chattel slave, it's it's the old testament. We are in the New Testament. Why we we need okay? To wait, put out wait, the wait, wait, the old wait, 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 Emmanuel. I mean, I, I feel like we don't. What we don't want to do is shift goalposts, right? So, uh, if chattel slavery, and I would just you know don't make up a definition of chattel slavery. Go go look one up. Um, but chattel slavery is slavery that is not dependent. Manumission of the of the uh, the slave is not dependent upon. Uh, the repayment of a debt. Uh, these are these are people that are the property of their master, right? So they're, they're ostensibly going to serve as long as the master wants them to serve, uh, which is what we all talk about in Leviticus 25, 44 to 46. That's the big place that everybody goes. But this is a place, you know, here, Deuteronomy 15, like these are places where uh, Israelites become, uh, are or become chattel slaves as well. So, I mean, I think that's something that you you probably need to consider in this discussion. Yeah, yeah, but but uh, uh, I'm pretty sure that the New Testament is not the same as the Old Testament. So, okay, that's fine. But let's let's because Old John asked you in the beginning, like, is it the same God? You said yes, and so it sounded like we were just trying to establish uh, first what the Old Testament says about it. You can make whatever theological argument you want from the New Testament. That's fine. And John, I'll shut up. But um, you know, like, I think that's important to establish, first of all, okay, this is, in fact, what the Hebrew Bible says about these things. Now let's go talk about what the New Testament says. Do you agree?
Yeah, we, we could talk about the New Testament if you were asking me. Uh, okay, okay, but is law and, and we're in agreement that the God of the Old Testament is the same God as is in the New Testament, and uh, at some point, I'd love to hear how you reconcile the fact that this uh, supposed uh, all loving God can command the taking of slaves, and not just chattel slaves, but He also commands taking of sexual slaves as well. Um, and we we can discuss that uh, further if you want to. But um, I would love to know how you can reckon, reconcile the idea of a omni benevolent God with this, uh, you know various uh, um, different kinds of slavery that he commands uh, be practiced? Uh, so w- what I think is God selects a few people and he shows he- all of his love, but he doesn't show it to everybody else, especially in the Old Testament. So I think the context of like slavery in the Old Testament is always negative. So God always asked them, you know, to, 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 keep slaves uh, in different areas with, as they go abroad until they get to the land of Canaan. So what I think is those people are idol worshipers and they don't worship God. Okay. That's why. So he's not Bible omnibenevolent says, then. You should, yeah, you should yeah, buy then, a servant among the heathens. Then, then hold on, Emmanuel, Emmanuel, then, then God, you would agree then that God is not omnibenevolent. God is omnibenevolent, but only to the people he has chosen, not to everybody else. I mean, isn't that omnibenevolence with an asterisk there, though? Like, it's got a caveat to it. Omnibenevolent, but only those that suck my dick. And and Emmanuel, Emmanuel, I think we just went over this, right? Because Exodus 21, 2 to 6, those are Israelite slaves. Those are not foreign heathen slaves, whatever you're calling them. That's a good um, point. So, you know, you, you have chattel slaves, and it's it's certainly not in a, at least as the way the text is presenting it there, particularly in verses 5 and 6. I mean, the you know, the, the, the dead slave who has to leave his wife and children is saying, I love my master, right? I will not go free. So, I mean, even as the way the text is presenting it, um, you know, it, it's it's certainly doing it uh, in a way that m- we today reading it, I wouldn't think, would look at it and say, "Well, that seems certainly negative." Um, at least, at, at least, sorry, we today meaning I think you, as the person defending slavery. Sorry, I don't think I should say that, but <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I, I read it and say that's negative, but it sounds like from your vantage point, looking at this contrast between Israelites and foreigners, or anything, you would say that sounds all in all better at least right would you say that no, i i wouldn't say that because we don't have to assume that all all israelites or all hebrews worship god so back in the old testament we see in joshua in deuteronomy that there are certain israelites that worship uh idols so, so that's sir, show me show me in, show me in Exodus 21. Go for it. Show me in Exodus 21 where it says that these are people that are idol worshipers in 2 to 6. No, no, no. I'm I'm not saying we could see it in Exodus 21. What I'm saying is, you know, th- there are like there are like Hebrews and Israelites. For example, in Exodus, you see in Exodus 31 when Moses went down from the mountain, they were worshiping idols. So there sure, are that's that's that fine, but you'd have God. to, you, if you're making this argument, Emmanuel, if you're making the argument that God is only allowing chattel slavery for people that are idol worshipers, then you have to demonstrate that 21, 2 to 6 is describing uh, there's somehow some kind of a connection, but you can't just assume that, right? So you'd have to demonstrate that. Where's that connection? Uh, uh, I might be... Uh... Uh, what I think is you have to look at verse 44. You just quoted uh, Leviticus, uh, Leviticus 25, right? It says you have to buy your servants from the... I quoted Exodus 21. So, well, yeah, oh, so Emmanuel, so we're working I'll, with Exodus 21. Okay, Exodus 21. Okay. The one you just read, 2 to 6. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
it's only for seven years. It's not even like a forever kind of slavery in Exodus 21. As Excellent. In the laws said, of Hammurabi, it's in the laws of Hammurabi, it's three years. Does that mean the laws of Hammurabi are better? It, it might be the the laws of Hammurabi. If, if if it is three years, it might be better. But okay, what probably I'm not is, something we want to argue Genesis here, is, though, right? And it doesn't sound like that's something you'd want to argue. The point here is that the woman and the children that are born uh, to this debt slave, chattel slave uh, relationship here, the man and the woman, uh, the woman, her, the wife, and her children belong to the master's chattel slaves. Now, the, the, the husband, the debt slave, can then say, well, look, I'm, I'm going to forego my manumission after the six years. I'm going to go get my ear pierced with the all. Uh, and then I'm going to serve as a chattel slave for life, right? These are all Israelites. So, like, th like these are, you, you'd have to make the, the de you'd have to demonstrate that here in Exodus 21, 2 to 6, that these are somehow either idol-worshipping Israelites or they're foreigners, which I don't, I don't know how you're going to demonstrate the latter. Uh, what I'm saying is, we, we have to recognize, so I, I don't think there are two separate events where you see Exodus 21 and Exodus th uh, 31st. And the other things is in Genesis, you see God putting out a curse on a certain people to become servants and to become slaves of a certain people. So I think, for example, you see uh, in, 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 in the house of Jacob, there were like two sons and you see uh, uh, you see, you see one being cursed to be a slave and the other to, to be okay. blessed. To what be what is this? Uh, uh, Emmanuel, well, Emmanuel, I'm so sorry. Emmanuel, what does the, any of this have to do okay. with Exodus 21 and like what we're talking about here? Because what we're talking about is the fact that Hebrews themselves can also be chattel slaves. So the whole idea of omnibenevolence to those that, you know, believe in God and accept God or, or Jesus is just totally thrown off the tracks because of the fact that Hebrews themselves can also be slaves. So it's the caveat that you put on it is not, is, is not a correct one. Um, it, it just seems like all around, uh, way more complicated to try to make an argument for an omnibenevolent God because he's just not omnibenevolent in the Bible. So uh, what I think is, first of all, we have to recognize that the Bible didn't have chapters and verses. So I think all of uh, all of the chapters before Exodus 21 is relevant because it's, it's still the same book. So what I what about Deuteronomy is, 15? Exodus, Do you think Deuteronomy 15 is is relevant as well when it talks about Hebrew male and Hebrew female slaves? Do you think that that's also relevant? Uh, of of course it does because here okay if it does if it Deuteronomy does right, it, Emmanuel 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 that, focus with me buddy so if it does why is it in Deuteronomy 15 it says after they serve for the six years when they're released in the seventh they're not just released they're given with uh, set out with tremendous provisions from the master. Now, is this a punishment because they're idol worshiping slaves? Uh, I, I'm not saying. Uh, what, what, uh, I'm sorry. I have to make myself clear. I'm not saying in all of the context of slavery or servanthood is related to idol worship. What I'm so saying just the is ones that help your that argument. Specific... That's what I'm hearing. Okay. What 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 I'm saying is. And in the context of servanthood, God always, because God brought them out of slavery, because he wanted, uh, he wanted Israel to, to worship God and to be full-time servants of God. And you see that if you want a servant or if you want slave, buy the slaves from the nation around you. That's what it's saying. So what I sure by the time you get to okay, Leviticus 25, 44 to 46. Yeah, absolutely. I, I agree with you. Of course, the holiness code in Leviticus 25 is, you know, later than what you see in the covenant code in Exodus 21 and uh, Deuteronomy 15. So, I mean, I don't know that you can make that argument strictly on the text itself. Like you'd have to take into account the time of writing. Yeah, if I have interpreted uh, if I have interpreted wrongly, I might be in a mistake. What I'm saying, what, what I'm 
Shields trying to prove is slavery is always seen negative in the entire Old Testament because slavery is seen as a curse. When someone curses, for example, the sons of Noah, you see Noah cursing out Sham, be a slave to your brother. So you, you, you see, you, okay, you, okay, you but, see those but, uh, things. Emmanuel, That's why when, uh, uh, and, Emmanuel, okay. Emmanuel, what, how, how is it, how is it a curse? Explain this to me because, uh, or maybe Josh can explain it to me. How would, could it be seen as a curse for a, a Hebrew to, uh, sell himself into the kind of slavery that the, the debt slavery that we're talking about where he gets released after seven years, but because his master gave him a wife and he had children and he decides to become a full on chattel slave for the rest of his life, uh, for that master and him also being a Hebrew, uh, how is this a curse upon him? Like, I'm not connecting the curse part to like slavery is a curse. Uh, and furthermore, the, the, how, how the hell does that help you, Emmanuel? How does that help you? I mean, you don't want to be in your position. I don't think you want to be saying that the slavery that is being endorsed in the laws of the Old Testament is bad. Like, I don't think you want to be saying that. I mean, we, we, I think we all recognize that that's the case. But I mean, I don't think in your position you want to be saying that if you're going to be defending it, right? Yeah, but w w what I think is when you see the entirety of Scripture, that's why God brought the New Testament under Jesus Christ, because the Old Testament had its own a lot of laws. You could look at Hebrews 8. It was a temporal, uh, it was a temporal law until grace in Christ comes. So I don't think you could. So you're you saying, could, yes, Emmanuel, sorry, church. sorry. So sorry. are you, are you saying, are you saying, and it's fine if you are, right? But I think we just need to get this out in the open. And John, I promise I'll stop talking after this. But are you saying um, that Yahweh gave commands for, to, to, that, so that and endorsed what, what he would later consider to be immoral practices? Uh, I, I don't think the New Testament consider it immoral. What I'm saying is all the laws or the commandments of the Old Testament doesn't apply for the New Testament church because the, the uh, because because law is a guardian so that we could grow into Christ and grace so it doesn't apply to us it's like talking about in the 1800s in America slavery was legal now it's illegal why are we to, so we can't say that uh, the 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 constitution it, in the so Emmanuel Emmanuel applies to us uh, Emmanuel if the law changed. Emmanuel can can you tell me how how exactly was slavery justified, like uh, in 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 the South in in the early days of of the United States? I mean, can you can you fathom how people justified the slave trade at that point in time? Like, as far as like, how did we what did we use to base our laws around slavery in the South or in in, in the United States in general when slavery was? Uh, so w w what I think is, by the way, I'm not American, so <laughs> I don't want to speak on uh, the things that I'm really ignorant of. I'm actually from Africa. So w w what I know is, mm -hmm. you know, the Europeans came to our land and they colonized our ancestors and they brought them to slavery. So uh, w w what I think is uh, the, the Europeans at the time thought that the darker skinned people you know, colonizing them will be beneficial to their own civilization. So that's what I think it has. And that doesn't apply I mean, to uh, uh, slavery and the new I mean, Probably, but my point was, my point was, was that, you know, slavery in, in a lot of instances, not, not just the United States, but slavery was justified using the Bible because of the verses that are in the Bible and also because of, like things that are found in the New Testament. So I, I guess I don't understand the point in bringing up the 1800s. Sorry, I automat I let my Amer like my United States sort of bias, I guess, take over in my assumptions. But uh, my my just my point was was that the Bible, uh, New Testament, Old Testament doesn't matter. The Bible in general is used to at that point in time is used to, uh, you know, are uh, to to justify the taking of slaves.
So I'm kind of interested. Uh, Maybe I'll, we can get I to. I think it's a misinterpretation. Okay, and so we just now have, like, with you or maybe uh, whoever taught you about this, just now we're understanding the true interpretation of what the words in the Bible mean. No, you, you, you just have to look at the text. The, the text in the New Testament says that you do this not with eye service, but you have a master, which is the Lord Christ. So when I obey my human masters, I'm I'm actually well, right. I'm not serving so, the human masters. I feel I'm, like I'm, uh, I'm Emmanuel. I feel like what you're doing, to Christ. Uh, Emmanuel. Uh, Emmanuel, I feel like what okay. you're doing, and correct me if I'm wrong. I feel like what you're doing is you're zooming out from the text, basically, and and getting like a thirty thousand foot view of what it's saying because you're trying to say here and again i could be wrong in what you're trying to say but i feel like what you're trying to say here is that well god is really the master of everybody so therefore you know everybody is considered like a slave to christ or a slave to god or something of that nature so there's no real like slavery because we're all subjected to god is that is that what you're trying to say uh, no, not just that, because be, because the Bible says in First Corinthians seven twenty three that you are bought by a price. Don't become bond servants of men. So everything that we do, we don't do it to human pleasure or to be exploited. Because what what, what I think is, first of all, we have to see uh, we have to see the Lord's teaching uh, about responding uh, good to evil. So. If I obey to cruel masters and I become, when I submit to the system, I'm actually serving God. I'm not serving humans in that context. That's what it's saying in Colossians 3.22 when it says that slaves obey your masters. I think that so, that's the, the correct interpretation of, of the New Testament. So, so Emmanuel, can I ask you, do, do you think then that the New Testament condemns the institution of slavery? The, the the New Testament doesn't condemn the institution of slavery, but it condemns the mistreatment of people. So, because you, you see in Colossians four one, it says that masters treat your servants fairly, because you have a master in heaven. So, after Paul after Paul instructing the slaves to 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 serve the Lord and to submit to their human master, it it, it makes a connection. And saying that masters don't don't treat them fairly because you have a so master, it doesn't sound like uh, it doesn't sound heaven. like you interpret it terribly differently than what we see in the in the Old Testament laws. So, for example, in Exodus twenty one twenty to twenty one, you know those verses are there to mitigate slave abuse. It is what they're for. Um, so, if that's the case, um, I mean, it doesn't sound like. In, at least in some ways from what you're saying, that you think that there is a tremendous difference between what's being right. stated in the Old Testament and what's being stated in the New. Right, it, because I feel like this it, is it, kind it, of it, one it, of the... This, hold, hold on, hold on, Emmanuel. I feel like this is one of those distinctions without a difference here. Be, uh, uh, because I feel like what you're saying, Emmanuel, is that, oh, well, the New Testament says treat your slaves good. Does that therefore make the holding of slaves like people as property does that make it okay if you treat them all right like is it okay to own another person uh, as long no, as I, you're okay I, I, i'm not saying that actually i have a conscious where i think that uh what i think this institution is actually evil but i do believe that god has a has a better worldview if, than i okay okay uh, I, right I, so, against the word of God. Okay. So uh, uh, we do need to move on here here in a second. But if if the institution of slavery is evil, why did God command evil be done? So, if he's so, only so first of all, God is a creator. God is a cre creator of good and evil, light and darkness. So what I do believe is. Even though I consider it to be evil, and when I see, you know, people killing a certain people in the Old Testament, and, you know, God killing a certain people in the New Testament, 
What I think is God is a better, has a better right, is a better righteous judge than I. If I say just because I think this part is evil, therefore God is evil, I'll be saying I am better than God when I'm not. And that will be no, a no, no. You just, I mean, you just don't know why. Is that just, just to, so I can steal man you? So, so you think that looking at these things, you would say, yes, that seems evil to me, but God's got a reason for it, or God has something bigger that I don't understand and I can't understand. Um, and so he's not yeah. evil, but it does yeah. seem it that so it does seem that way to me. Is that what you're saying? Yes, I think one of the okay. factors is that. Uh, honestly, I feel Hello? like anybody that considers. Hello. Uh, you I, I can hear you. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, I, I feel like okay. it, maybe we can end it at this because we do have some more calls to get to, but um, I feel like anybody that can recognize slavery as being this um, absolutely immoral thing, uh, it, that it's abhorrent and it, it should have never happened, I feel like that makes you better than God in general um, as far as the God of the Bible goes. So, um, I, I mean, I'm glad that you feel that way, but at the same time, i um, I, I I would hope that you would recognize that, you know, the God of the Bible does definitely command the taking of slaves. And if you can figure out that that's evil or bad or immoral, why couldn't God? And if God did know that it was immoral, why is he considered omnibenevolent and then commands immoral actions of his chosen people? Those are the oh. kind of questions that come to mind for me. Okay. So, so, All right. so what I think is God is, but, okay, I'm sorry. No, uh, you, you go, go on Hello? ahead. We do need to move on, but maybe, maybe you can uh, yeah. give, give some final thoughts or some, uh, anything like that before we move on to the next caller. Uh, what I think is when we, uh, when we respond uh, good to evil, as the, uh, as the Lord said, I think our reward, even though we are suffering in the earth, I think we, we have a reward on God. So I think that and justify the means is my argument in this case. Oh, no. I mean, I will say, and I know we got to move on to just, and Emmanuel, I appreciate your, your patience with us interrupting you quite a bit. Um, but I will say that uh, th this position of what I think is just skeptical theism, right? I think that's what this is. Uh, is probably, as far as I'm concerned, if you're going to hold to a position of the God of the Bible is true and just and you know, omnibenevolent and all those things, is to at least get to the point where you can say, as it sounds like you're doing, yes, slavery is immoral, right? This is, in a, this, this is something that seems really, really bad to me, and I agree that it's really bad. I just don't know why God allowed it, but I just, I just believe that he does. If, if, if you're going to hold a position, I, I feel like that's maybe one of the better ones to hold. Um, so at least good, good on you okay. for that. It, that doesn't sound like you're trying to argue for the morality of something that is immoral. So thank you. Hold this beer. <laughs> <laughs> that, thank you so much, Emmanuel, for calling in. I always, always love having a conversation thank with you, you there, bud. Thank you, Emmanuel. Okay. All right. Thank you. You have a good night, man. Thank you. Thank you, All Josh. Right. Okay. Have a good night, too. Hi, Emmanuel. I, I, I'm going to jump in for a second because I want to, I, uh, first of all, I want to congratulate Dr. Bowen. You're now officially a part of the line because you've had a discussion with Emmanuel. Uh, <laughs> there are a lot of people who really wish, and I get told every time uh, we have them, just ban Emmanuel. And I haven't, and, I'm, and so far I've decided not to. Uh, I have put people in timeouts. I put him on a two-week timeout once. Charlie CJ tried to call the guy who's always just talking about, Oh, and when I tell you the truth, when you hear it, it's going to be amazing. And you're going to know it's the truth. That guy, uh, I, uh, I, I put him on a month time out today. Actually, we almost had a show with Emmanuel and CJ on the same show. And I, I put a stop to that nonsense. But, uh, so the thing <laughs> is you had the, the main reason I'm stepping in. I kind of like Emmanuel. I like, I feel like I'd hang out with Emmanuel and stuff. He, he is not, I repeat, not a skeptic theist. Uh, in, the, in the last episode, uh, in the last episode of of 
uh, what was it? I guess it was Cuz I Wanna on Friday. He called me and we basically argued about evolution. And there is a clip of him saying, and it's a short on my on my channel if you want to see it, of him saying, yes, evolution is an established fact, but the Bible disagrees. So he's going with the Bible over an established fact. And that's when I told him, there is no point in continuing the call if you're not even bringing me a God that fits in a reality that you acknowledge is reality. Uh, but anyway, you've got a few other slavery. I, I would stick on the slavery ones. If, if I can suggest a call, I'd go to, to, to the one, the three with the period, but online four over there, I'd, I'd suggest. But obviously, y'all, it's y'all's to drive. Do as you like. Right. Uh, yeah, that, that's actually who I was going to pick up next. Although uh, what I did want to remind people of was the other shows that we do have here uh, on the line. Like um, tomorrow, Tuesday, we've got Hostility with Jimmy, and the guest <laughs> is uh, Lloyd Host, Evans. Hostility. It's a, it's a pun. It's Host, not called oh. Hostility. That's hostility. The what it means. Hostility. Hostility. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. I... I've got a touch of dyslexia or something. Ha, ha, uh, host. Well, that's John, good. we're just on culture, man. That's all it is. That's that is all it is. Standard pronunciation. Did I forget to we're capitalize host? No, I even capitalized. No, 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 no. You did. <laughs> you, you caught, you capitalized it. Like I said, I, my brain just was like <laughs> not so registering funny. anything. John, so I not only would have it. pronounced it that way at first, but even after him <laughs> saying this to me, if I were going to say it again, I would still. Uh, accidentally pronounce it incorrectly, so I'm be, don't I'm feel be bad. Hostile as hell to Lloyd Evans. No, we're gonna have, we're yeah. talk about the <laughs> Okay, sorry. Uh, sorry, but yes, we've got hostility tomorrow night with Jimmy and Lloyd. So y'all be sure sure to tune in for that. Also, uh, I know that we, we are kind of getting full up on the lines here. I think we're nearly full, uh, but you know, keep on keep these questions coming. So we've got Terry. Uh, from Quebec, uh, wants to talk about Hi. some slavery stuff. What's up there, Terry? Hi. Yeah, um, I have a question. I've seen a, a debate recently on uh, Dr. Josh uh, conflating uh, Israelite with uh, the sons of Israel. I, I was wondering, how can he reconcile his understanding of that in light of the fact that um, uh, Israelite you can go ahead and is hang a up physical one and John. Defendant? Is, uh, is a I took care of it. Uh, yeah, I he tried to change his voice, web, but, the... but that was cute. Oh, okay, who was it? That's the, I don't even want to say his name. Well, it's up there on the screen. The Your Way, okay. Yahweh, Seven Day Cycle guy. Oh, okay. So here's what I'll say. Right. So everybody watching, if anybody goes and listens to this individual uh here's sort of my standing thing um pat lowinger kip davis and i have all said we've given this guy way too much of our time uh and he's a fairly bigoted human being and i just don't want to be on stage with him frankly uh so <clears throat> with that being said if anybody actually listens to him and says oh my god He's got some really great arguments. Uh, I, I just, I don't know how to deal with them. I don't know what the answers are, but I think they're really, really great. I've said this any number of times. Please feel free to bring them to me, and I will show you why they are nonsense. Uh, but you can hear it here, right? He tried to call up the last time I was here. Actually, Jimmy, I was on with you. Yeah. Uh, same guy. And uh, he, called, yeah, he tried uh, to change his voice. Yeah. He called. So uh, did you see the, 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 I think it was, it was him, right? Have you seen the tweet of me screaming, that's the fucking point with my... Yeah. And at a register yeah. high enough only for... Uh, was that Dogs him? Dogs here. No, wait, that wasn't him. That was Andrew. He called in as Mr. Yum Yum recently for somebody else. And what did they talk about? I interrupted uh, by the end. Oh, I remember. I interrupted uh, him to say like, hey... Stop interrupting Forrest and Erica. Let them finish what they're saying. And by the way, everyone notices you're interrupting Erica more than Forrest. Uh, mm. And he goes, was that Jimmy Snow, that certified R word? And we hung up on him as he was calling me an autistic man, the R slur. So 
Uh, uh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he, Mr. Yum Yum, okay. Mr. Mischievous, or some shit like that in the past was the seven day, yeah, dipshit. I think we're talking okay. about the same guy, but he's like, he's, he's the new Otangelo who now we only yeah. have to, all we have to <laughs> you only have to say Otangelo and people laugh now. That is, that is what Otangelo's name has become a joke by itself. I, I just, <clears throat> you know, there are certain people that, um, will still entertain him and that's, you know, that's, that's absolutely on them. That's, you know, if, if, if they're comfortable with that, uh, I've just heard so many horrific things come out of his mouth, and uh, you know, so if it were if it were only that it was the seventy eighth time that I've had to correct him on something that he came at me with, fine. Like I feel like I do that a lot online. Um, but I don't know. Like at least most of the people that I engage with in apologetics online, after you sort of show that a position that they hold is sort of silly. And usually I, I try to do that very nicely. Usually they'll still throw something else at you, right? And they, they don't ever stop throwing things at you just to see if something will eventually stick. But at least they change course a little bit, right? Usually. Uh, but after a while, when, when people just sort of, you know, bullheadedly say the same things over and over again and then say horrific things along with it, um, yeah, I just, I don't, there's certain people I just don't have time for. That's one of them. So I, I feel it. John and Captain I, Dreamy, I'll let you get back to it. <laughs> Captain Dreamy. <Okay. Shrek. laughs> All right. We're, we're going to go to uh, Martin that uh, wants to talk about just some general God stuff. And uh, that's, that's a nice change of pace. Hey there, Martin. How you doing? Uh, I'm good. Thank you. I got to say that Emmanuel is a tough act to follow. I'm pretty sure now that I don't want to be a slave. <clears throat> He's ruined slavery for me, man. Hey, Martin, can we have you call back uh, right now? Like maybe refresh and we'll, we'll reconnect you immediately. But you're like, you're clicking. You got a, like a click and a hop and a, and, a, and a static to your voice right now. So if there's any way we can improve oh, that, even just by refreshing the call, we'll reconnect you right away. But it's uh, it sounds like shit. Man. Okay. Thanks. All Martin. right. Bye bye. Yeah. Do you want to announce the other shows while we wait for Martin to reconnect? Oh yes, definitely. Uh, so Jimmy there is going to be filling in for Matt with uh, R and Raw uh, on Wednesday for the Hang Up, and then uh, let's see on Thursday we've got Arden uh, who will be hosting the Transatlantic Show. And then on Sunday, of course, it's Matt and Jimmy. So uh, we've got shows coming up all week. And then I don't know if Jimmy's going to pull a random ass Friday night show again. I don't even know if I'm going to do that. I, it'll all depend on if I want to. Saturdays, too. It's Friday and Saturday. Yeah. If I just get a hair in my ass because I want to, I want to. And then I do it. And then I want to. And I do it. Uh, okay. Or if, yeah, that's that's the theme of the show. Like, I'm, I'm, Or if it looks like we're going to have to sell the show to Dr. Yum Yum because the... You know, it's not doing well when you oh, yeah. raise funds. I'll throw an extra because I want to, you know. Oh, okay. <laughs> that sounds good. Uh, let's see. Uh, Martin's not coming back immediately. So, um, so maybe we should move on slash to call the line. I was oh. just trying to delay a little longer because I want to, I want to get him in. If, if, if he can reconnect, I wanted to give him first shot but yeah, yeah patreon. i mean he, he was the lines. good good thing to pop. hey everybody go to patreon oh uh, yeah here i'll throw that out there go to patreon.com if you like this show or any of the other shows it's the best way to support any of the shows here on the line is by becoming a patron or anyone, a patreon however you pronounce that does anyone here know why someone in the chat just asked why do humans still have ass hair anyways i'd like to know this too i'm I feel like I spend more money on toilet paper than most people because of this very problem. <laughs> because of I, ass hairs? Like, you get I, dingleberries? I have to tell everyone this. You all don't know this, but, uh, uh, or most people don't just know this, because why would you? But Josh is one of my best friends in the whole wide world. I don't know if he knows that, because I'm very <laughs> neglectful as a friend, but that's true of everyone I'm close to. And I get the most joy out of making him blush <laughs> and laugh. 
and giggle. And so any half the times I'm doing stuff with, on episodes <laughs> where he's on, like putting name banners up like this, it's just for the moment when he, he makes eyes with the name banners and tries not to laugh his ass off. Uh, and so I, I'm antagonizing the man, uh, and that's what I needed every day. All right, Martin's back. Good. Okay, here we go. Okay. I'm, I'm yeah. out. Fuck yeah, here baby. we go. Hey, hey, th- hey there, Martin. How you doing? I'm good. Thank you. Can you hear me? Okay. It still sounds like garbage. Can you just maybe pose your question and then they'll and they'll answer it best they can, and then maybe we'll do a full combo another day. Uh, thanks. Yeah. Uh, maybe another day. Oh, no, this sounds good. Now this sounds great. Whatever you just did, keep doing it. Do that. All right. Oh, okay. I, I hope you can hear me. Yeah. We're, we got you good. So what's up? Oh, so my audio is good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Tremendous. Oh, top okay. tier now. Top 10%. Oh, well, this, this is good news. Uh, I, it's a bit weird to follow Emmanuel. He's a tough act to follow, and he's ruined slavery for me. I mean, he's taken oh, no. all the fun out of it. <laughs> you know, it's just terrible. Uh, I, okay. I, I had a question. I phrased it to your call screener about the need for the universe to have been created. But I think I phrased it wrong. Um, I'll try and bumble my way through it. Isn't it true that there must be a precondition of necessary ultimacy of all dependent states and that this precondition must be an ultimate divine being, which in turn is probably a horseshoe crab named Mount. <clears throat> Can I handle this one? Uh-huh. Oh, you think this is funny, <laughs> yeah. right? You think this is funny? <laughs> Listen, um, and, I'm going to have to push back. Don't you dare. Don't you dare borrow from my Christian worldview. <laughs> or I'm coming down there. <laughs> so I know who this is, <clears throat> and it makes me very happy. Yeah, I bet you do. I know who this <laughs> yeah. is too. <laughs> so uh, you know, let let me just say this because uh, again, I, I I have to push back. Uh, Martin here, if that's <laughs> if, if that's his name, and Martin, uh, <clears throat> you know, he uh, actually can't instantiate the necessariness of the preconditional possible impossibilities providing for the necessity of all being, which grounds the peripheral ultimacy of instantiation. So, you know, I don't know why he's calling up here because, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Try try to answer that. Dr. Josh. (laughs) That's not a word salad. That's a word enema. All right. I'm just completely cleaned out now. (laughs) <laughs> oh shit sure <clears throat> so i have all you want i i have <clears throat> i have a terrible terrible habit of going into live chats of some of my favorite shows and t- typing out <clears throat> this uh pseudo presuppositionalist uh nonsense mm-hmm. that i come up with off the top of my head and i'm absolutely sure that i'm saying it all incorrectly uh, primarily because I just don't give a fuck. But um, <clears throat> yeah, it's uh, so I'm, I'm just getting a taste Whoa. of my own medicine now. Taste of my own medicine. Well, you did it to me more than once, so now I'm just returning <laughs> yes. the favor. But I any number of times. You, yes, I have to tell you that it was a trick question because, as we know, all horseshoe crabs are named Malcolm. So <laughs> you know, it's not really fair. But I'll let you get to real callers, but I wanted to say thank you to all for indulging me in this. Thank you. Yeah. This was hilarious. Okay, it's been real. <laughs> Bye for now. Take care. Yeah, thanks, Martin. I have to admit, Josh, I have no fucking clue as to who that person was. <laughs> I don't want to... Like, I'll, I'll tell you all fair. 
Yeah, I don't want to say okay. his his screen name. I don't know if he wants me to say his screen name. So, um, <clears throat> but yeah, I'll, I'll, we're I'll, good friends. Yeah, I'll ask after the show. Let's pretend I didn't uh, ask that at all. Hey, did y'all know that there's a Patreon for the line? Also, call in if you're a theist and you want to ask us about slavery or God. Um, you know, becoming a Patreon or calling in. Uh, work at both of those work probably one more than the other. Uh, but um, I slightly hesitate to get to this uh, this next call. Uh, just because I really don't care to have this kind of conversation. But we'll we'll try it out. We'll see how it goes. Nicholas, uh, from, uh, wherever, uh, Hey, how's it going? What's up? What do you want to talk about? Pretty good. Yeah. Um, I guess to sort of, uh, kick off, I think the reason that you have hair around your rectum is, uh, just to keep out like any, uh, you know, invasive, like, you know, bacteria or whatever. And typically this isn't a problem, but humans evolved to have, such large glutes that uh you know it kind of uh squishes your butt cheeks together <laughs> so you need toilet paper uh so i think that's kind of like the more medical explanation but uh r.i.p to jimmy snow's bank account um <laughs> yeah so i guess uh i wanted to talk a little bit about uh uh a slavery in maybe like a slightly different context um i know that uh it's everybody's favorite conversation to have is the one that i'm about to drop um which is that um well let me let me preface this by saying you could compare two things without saying they're equal right so we could compare a firecracker to an atomic bomb without saying they're equal we could compare a geyser to a volcano that kills people um, so I, I know that that's, I just want to preface that because I'm about to make a comparison that a lot of people might regard as slightly inflammatory, but know that it's not necessarily intended that way. But um, I think that for the same reasons that we should oppose uh, slavery, I think that we should oppose uh, the, I guess, of needless abuse of animals. And I was just wondering what your opinion was on that. Okay. Uh, well, for me personally, I mean, I'm, I'm very much against, uh, abusing animals in general, but, uh, I'm still an omnivore, uh, but we, we tried to do our best to, you know, get, uh, ethically sourced meats and all this other stuff. Uh, so, uh, we, we try to do our best to be very conscious about, you know, where our money goes as far as, you know, uh, getting our meat and stuff like that. But, um, it, 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 as far as far as all that goes that that's kind of where i stand it's um you know the the fact that there that there has been animal abuse in the past or maybe there's currently animal abuse going on isn't going to restrict me from you know uh enjoying meat or or eating meat or anything like that i'm still not a vegan uh but hey josh how do you feel about this topic i, I almost want to like cut it off before we even go any longer because god fucking damn it like, Nicholas, look, I'm going to be nice. I really am. Nicholas, you were sitting at home and you went, oh, my God, they're doing an episode on biblical slavery with a goddamn expert. You know what I need to get my vegan points for the day in? My vegan steps. I got to get them in. I'm wearing my vegan pedometer. And if I don't mention, by the way, guys, you're, you know, these aren't as bad as each other, but you can compare a firecracker to an atomic bomb. But I'll tell you what, my fucking idiot neighbor who shouldn't even be allowed to own guns. I'm not doing shit about stopping him from having firecrackers, but if you ask me whether he should eat nukes or animals, I, you know, this is the, the conversation fucking changes. But Nicholas, I'm, like, I'm is sorry. there anything you couldn't bring to veganism? <laughs> I'm just curious. If I had said like the way to make mean? the perfect peanut butter and jelly sandwich, <laughs> would you have called and been like, Hey, listen though, is that honey wheat? Because we need to talk about the ethics of whether or not bees, if that's very vegan or not. What couldn't you have made about veganism? What topic uh, on a clear on a night where we've got a person who is a, 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 a topically an expert on the Old Testament and its relationship to slavery? What topic, Nicholas, would you not have made about veganism tonight? Because I want to do that show next. Uh, okay. I mean, I just uh, thought that, you know, if you were interested, you know, I mean, I guess I, I just, uh, I, okay, sure. Fair enough. You know, uh, I mean, just from the basis of like reading the moral landscape and, you know, our yeah. moral, uh, 
duties towards conscious organisms. And just so you I know, listening that, uh, to Sam Harris's podcast doesn't mean you read the moral landscape. <laughs> no, I, I actually have, uh, sure uh, like, it's I was literally funny. looking at it earlier today. So, I mean, uh, it's just a joke. Podcasts also don't it, mean so. you've read communist theory is all I'm saying. Uh, Nicholas. Uh, uh, okay. I, all right. Yeah. Sorry about, uh, I guess, the intrusion. Animals, everybody. Um, Nicholas right. is a vegan, if you didn't one. know. Thanks, bud. <laughs> <laughs> Shit! <laughs> you guys are Jesus Damn, Christ! That, that was a Christ. Short what are we call. doing here? I, I'm sorry. Do you feel I, okay? Look, people in the comments are going to say it was rude of Jimmy to just decide that, as though like, first of all, who in 2023, what individual in the entire world knows better how to produce an atheist skeptic call-in show than me? I dare anybody. In, in the current year to find someone who knows how to and, and has better instincts than me. But maybe there is someone out there. But so, And someone's going to complain, oh, Jimmy shouldn't have interrupted that call. It's not his show. He's just the producer. And I agree. The line <laughs> should the line should get all of their corporate together and vote to fire me. But they keep not doing it for some fucking reason. Whoever's running the line <laughs> should really shut me up. But, like, did you, you even said at the beginning, like, I'm reluctant to even take this call. Here, let me say this real quick. We, we have another caller, at least one other caller late, wait, waiting. We'll get to Super Chat soon. But we've got still got lines open, especially if theists want to call. But if you're an atheist and you're like, yo, somebody brings me this thing about slavery, call in. We have Dr. Josh here, the guy who, if you've been watching all week, you've heard me plug his book, I think, three times uh, uh, to callers who were, like, just wrong. We've got the guy. Call in if you got a question for the guy. Uh, uh, but but uh, do you? I, I I hope you don't feel like I was being rude and demanding to take control of this. But geez, did anyone want to do that call? Anybody here? I just assume you two well, are like best friends. Like that's how. That's I don't know how I that fucking that. guy. <laughs> You thought I knew that guy? I, no I did. I, I thought he was no like a regular. No, I don't know who the That's fuck that is. I just know somebody was sitting at home and going, hmm, this show about biblical slavery is not very much about me. I'm going to see if they got open lines. <laughs> well, what I just know, I, look, the reason why I was reluctant to take the college, I, I know that those those particular topics can really devolve quickly into absurdity and yeah. so if if it was if if he was the type of person that was going to de dissolve or devolve into that then it was just it was going to be a quick call because yeah. i mean i really just don't care about the whole vegan non-vegan they're like, losing topic. they're like, losing the people left and right right now anyway the representatives of veganism where because they're like hey guys sorry i took a one bite of a hamburger and i wasn't cold anymore like they're, 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 <laughs> their side's not doing great right now <laughs> like what do you what do we do with this shit so is this why they're coming over because there's also been a resurgence in vegan comments y'all People, I think everybody here at some point, we've had conversations about what our current relationship with is with animals and eating and all that sort of stuff is. And I think all of us have changed, but none of that matters. The fact that like we actually do think about it and take action accordingly, none of that fucking matters. It's literally just like, hey, so I know it's not the same as biblical slavery, but isn't it though? Isn't it? Because <laughs> Earl can buy a bottle rocket. He can't buy a nuke. And that's why I feel safe and living next to Earl. God damn it. <laughs> anyway. I'm sorry. Uh, <clears throat> no, it's, it, I, it's fine. Way, the, I've been given warn, warnings about this next call, too. So I don't know what the deal is, but, you know, do it. Do whatever you like. Sorry if okay. I was rude. <laughs> no, that's, that's, you're fine. Uh, I mean, it's, it's your show, technically. Anyways, all right. Next, we're going to be talking to Frank. What up there, Frank? How you doing? Yeah. Hello. Hi. I'm here. Yeah, how you doing wasn't a yes or no question there, Frank. <laughs> oh, it wasn't a yes or no question? How are you, man? Oh, how am I? Sorry. Uh, I, I'm just trying to get off the speakerphone here. Sorry. I'm doing all right. What's up? It's y'all show. You all take it. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> what, what 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 do you want to talk about, Frank? Okay. Hey guys, what's up? Hey, um, 
I was wondering uh, if you guys could address like the similarities between the old Bible slavery crap and uh, like the modern day, you know, abusers, the modern day uh, people who treat people like objects, and they uh, basically try to run the whole family, the whole, you know, whatever group they're in. They try to do the same thing. They try to treat their the people beneath them. Everybody's beneath them. You know, we're all objects, and uh, it's wondering if you guys ever do you see the similarities at all? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> well, I tell you what, John, maybe I could sort of give a, a, a broad overview, maybe of the way that um, slavery function and its comparisons to you know, like the the broader family unit uh, in the ancient Near East in general, and of course <clears throat> what we see in the Hebrew Bible, and then if you want to draw that comparison to something more modern. Um, you know, essentially slavery, uh, in a lot of ways, looking at it, uh, from the, the, the perception of a constellation of characteristics, there's a lot of similarity actually, um, in certain aspects between, uh, what the father, the paterfamilias could do in the ancient Near East, the head of the household, what he could do with, uh, his wife or his children uh, or his slaves or, you know, any other property that he had. Um, and, and, and that doesn't mean that there is some equation to be made between the status of a wife, the status of a son or daughter, and the status of a slave. They're distinct roles. But there are a lot of things that show similarity, right? So, uh, for example, a father could as we see in places like Exodus 21, 7 through 11, uh, could sell his daughter into slavery to pay off a debt. Right? That was perfectly legitimate, perfectly legal. Um, and, you know, members of a household could be pledged uh, to, you know, a creditor uh, in, in, uh, in the case of a debt. And so, you know, and then the, the, the pledge would then be made to work um, to serve as a, a, in, a in the capacity essentially of a slave in all intents and purposes as a slave. Um, and so there was direct control very much in that way that now that, that some of the differences are their established rights that, excuse me, that according to the law that wives had, that, you know, children had that slaves obviously did not. Uh, and that is not to say that even chattel slaves had no rights. Uh, that's not the case. Um, and certainly dead slaves had more rights. Uh, but you know, children and, and wives had more uh but there's there, there's a lot of similarities it's a very patriarchal society right i mean it's the it's really the bottom line here and uh so i think when we when we think about it from just that broad patriarchal society standpoint i think john you could probably make a lot of comparisons to uh people today that still operate um as as i see them every day on social media people that are um you know very much entrenched and fundamentalist evangelicalism, you know, where they they make statements like, you know, I'm the I'm the man, the buck stops here. All, I've got the responsibility. My wife should be cooking me meals, and you know, being a good homemaker. And my kids sit still in the pew, and you know, like there's still very much that um, a patriarchal structure. Not that it's my area of expertise, but John, maybe you could speak to it more. Well, yeah. So, I mean, there's there's a lot of um, the the slavery, I guess, kind of thinking in in those kind of interpersonal relationships that uh, even occur now. I mean, you've got the um, you know the quiverful movement um, kind of still operates in 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 this similar respect in that you know the head of the household is the father, and it, they've even got this whole system worked out where it's like the the father approves of like anyone that dates the daughter or courts the daughter or anything like that. So like they, they, they throw in this sort of air of consent, like now, instead of just not even considering, because when I read the old Testament, like w w when you read about like um, for instance, uh, Jacob purchasing, uh, uh, I forget his name, Laban, Laban starters, uh, Rachel and um, Leah. Um, 
you know, there's no, there's no talk of consent there when it, when it comes to that. It, I mean, it's literally just a dude who doesn't have money. So he pledges his, his hard work for seven years in order to purchase one of the women. And then he ends up purchasing both women, but there, there's no real worry about the consent of, of the women in that they're just sold off like their, like their property. And, you know, we, uh, we, you know, you see, you see, some similar aspects to that in like the quiverful movement. You've also got um, stuff like uh, the, um, Oh, who's that? Who's that woman on Twitter? And she's like the traditional wife or transformed wife. That's right. Honey. Um, she, she has the whole, Oh, women should be in the kitchen barefoot and pregnant and all this other stuff. And the men should be out there making the money and they should, you know, make all the decisions. And then you, you've just, you have this whole traditional kind of movement within evangelical Christianity of like, and you, you even see this uh, it, sometimes in politics. Now it's, it's starting to creep into like mainstream politics of you know, thinking that, Oh, well, ever since we gave women you know, the right to vote or we started promoting them having jobs and everything like that. Like shit's just gone downhill. And like, now we have this, that, and the other thing that I think is bad. And so you have that kind of thinking that's still that very patriarchal, like the women should, or the men should be in control of everything. And, uh, you know, that in the Bible, there's this hierarchy of like, there's God, there's Jesus, there's, and then uh, as far as earthly, goes it's the man that's above the wife and the wife is above the children so it's like each one's subservient to the next and it's it's still this whole idea of of, of slavery and i mean um you know the there there are still some latent aspects uh even even in my uh bringing up uh I, I was brought up with some aspects of that just the whole idea that you weren't supposed to question your parents and you know that kind of that actually taught me that i wasn't supposed to question anybody in authority so it's like if somebody told me something kind of weird then you know i wouldn't think you know anything of it it's only later after i got out of that that i was like oh shit, yeah i wouldn't like there's no way i'd be okay with that but it's like at the time you know, I was kind of, I was kind of brought up to just obey. And I think that that's kind of a product of that. Um, so yeah, I don't know I, if we I answered think, your uh, question. One way there, to Frank. establish the, the authority there is, I mean, now it's obvious that, you know, physical, you know, damage to people is not okay. It's not cool to beat your kids. It's, you know, we all know that, you know, we all are growing here, but, but these people, you know, just like, uh, you know, liars that never really change. They just get better at lying. Um, these people, they move from the physical and they go into the psychological and emotional abuse. And it's all for the same reason to control these people. And, uh, I'm seeing not just me, but we're seeing uh, a lot of similarities with the Bible and the people that refer back to the Bible. There's, you know, they're just defending their own way of life, which is, you know, to treat people as objects. There's no respect. We don't respect each other as, you know, another human being there. It's either lower or higher than me. Like you said about the authority, I, I know that feeling. Um, mm -hmm. And that's what pretty much I just wanted to say. And uh, also, when these people call in about the Bible, and uh, they say, you know, what came before the Big Bang or the Big the Bang, the multiverse, and uh, there is another thing they're doing. They're just flipping shit around. They're flipping around. And, I mean, it's just obvious. How do you make something out of nothing? You create God. All right, guys. It's uh, good seeing you, Godless. I haven't seen you all. You Frank. dropped off my uh, my YouTube, but glad you're back. Bye. Oh, th thank you, Frank. Uh, g uh, glad to have you on the show and everything like that. So. Appreciate you, man. Before you go um, to the last one, I, I so, do have to run, jump in with one correction. Uh, you brought up Laban, okay. Laban, right? Right. It's actually pronounced Lay Layron. That was only <laughs> to make Josh laugh. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's an insane it's sort of joke. I'm back. sitting there racking my brain thinking, what <laughs> what detail did it get wrong? I thought he hit that pretty right, you know? <laughs> so, so thanks, <laughs> thanks for that, Jimmy. You're welcome. <laughs> All right, up. so we do have one call. 
<laughs> yeah, we do have one call left, and then we're going to be getting to the Super Chats. Super Chats are a great way for you to support the show here, as well as becoming a, a Patreon uh, over there on Patreon. Uh, those links are in the description. And also, don't forget about all the shows that we got this week, like tomorrow with hostili- host- Hostility. <laughs> host Hostility. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy and guys. Lloyd. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So uh, we are for our final call tonight. We're taking Cameron. Uh, how you doing there, Cameron? What, what's up? I'm good. I wanted the uh, high God listen engineer, but I wanted to talk to Dr. Josh Bowen because he's the man. And uh, yep. take your Lord, the Lord's name in vain. What does it mean? So, it always sounds like it's swearing, but to me, it could be um, do not attribute to the Lord what he has not done. Hmm. Yeah, this is a good question. Um, so the Hebrew word there, shav, uh, is, uh, it, it like has this idea of worthlessness, Um so what does it mean uh yeah to take it as as worthless i have not read through the secondary literature on this recently it's probably been since i've worked through this section of the text it's probably been 10 years um <clears throat> what i suspect though so so with my caveat uh i could be wrong about this but um so take that for what it is worth. I suspect this has to do with uh, curse formulae. So in the ancient Near East, including the Hebrew Bible, there is um, this idea of swearing by the name of the deity. And uh, what this means, you see it all throughout royal inscriptions um, in Mesopotamia, both in Sumerian and Akkadian. and of course, you see it in the, the books of uh, Deuteronomy and Leviticus as well, toward the end in Leviticus 26 and Deuteronomy 28. Uh, there are these course, curse formulae. So it's it's essentially like um, uh, if if you do well, if you obey the, the uh, stipulations that are set herein, uh, Yahweh is going to do all these great things, these blessings upon you. But if you don't, he's going to curse you. And the idea here in swearing by the name of the deity was if you swear by the name of that god uh in you know in ancient Near East might have been ishtar or enlil or enki or whatever um or marduk or asher the idea would be if you if you didn't uphold your end of the bargain or if you were lying or something to that effect um that that would bring down this curse upon you right so uh it, it a little bit of a funny story here. <clears throat> when we were working through, uh, when I was up at Hopkins, we were translating through, I think it was Ezekiel, and my friend Caleb Howard uh, was translating this, one of these curse formula, and, and in the Hebrew it just says, uh, if I don't do X, period. Right? And we always have to sort of figure out how to translate that, because you can't just say, well, if I don't do this, and then stop. Because the implication there is like, if I don't do X, then something, the God will curse me or something bad will happen to me from the deity. And so he, he translated it, well, I'll be damned if I, do, if I don't do this, which I thought was really funny. And it was pretty accurate. So anyhow, a um, bit of a sidebar there. <clears throat> but funny, right? Everybody thought that was funny. Okay, good. Um, but no, I, 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 yeah, I suspect that what's happening here is that when it says, don't take the Lord's name, lightly don't take it as worthlessness counted as worthlessness t- t- take it vain you know as it's translated that this probably has to do with look this is a serious matter to swear by the name of the deity um and so don't do that or you will bring that calamity uh, down upon yourself now again that's my off the cuff response uh if kip davis is listening to me or dan mcclellan are like i just read about all this you know i i stand to get bombarded in my uh in my dms here shortly but um uh, yeah that would be my off the cuff response but definitely go look at a good commentary on this i suspect uh, thomas dozman's got a lot to say about it um but yeah anyway those are my thoughts okay um 
my mother always uh, does her key. Thanks to the Lord for finding her car keys and all that. So everything that good happens is from him. And it seems like he, she's breaking the commandment there by attributing too much to him. Yeah, I mean, I, certainly there could be like a, you know, like a read a response type of application or interpretation there that could lead to that that sort of a, a conclusion, and that, you know, that would be on the individual to do that. I don't think that's what was meant in the original context. I suspect it had to do more with with this type of taking the name of the deity too lightly in in swearing oaths. Uh, but I'm going to go do some reading on this. Uh, you know, because I don't have enough to do. Uh, but I, I do want to go look at this right. now. So thank you. <laughs> okay, well, uh, thank you very much for the for uh, answering the question. Um, and I, can I ask Jimmy one question? What, what was the deal with the club club crackers back in Colorado? Everything must have a meaning. The club crackers had to have a meaning in his background. Uh, bro, I'm fat. <laughs> oh, that's a good answer. I like food. I like club crack. Oh, no, 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 wait. I remember, I remember, I remember. You're right. There was a meaning, uh, because there was a meaning to everything. Uh, Vosh, I put those up there after Vosh got banned from Twitter, from Twitch, for using the word cracker as a pejorative. That was the real answer. Uh. Oh. Yeah. All right. Love you guys. Uh, go Thank to you. Super Chats. Make some money. Bye. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Bye, bye there, Cameron. The reason, <laughs> the reason I had the cub, Club Crackers on hand already when it happened was because I'm fat. But the reason why they actually went on the shelf was because uh, of, yeah, the the Cracker incident. Uh you, you know, interesting, and I, I'm fairly certain that this is probably just the area that I grew up in as far as the collar is concerned. Um, it, you know, I don't really have anything intellectually to add to this. Uh, you know, Josh did an excellent job there. Uh, but in, in my area of, like, the South, in North Alabama, I actually heard uh, the phrase, the, the word, God damn it, more from religious people than I heard any other curse word. Um, and I, I'm not exactly sure why, uh, because, you know, uh, I know that uh, I, I've said the word, you know, in front of some of my friends who were, it, it, it was kind of one of those times where it's like, you didn't know your friends were super religious until then because of all of the weird, like crazy shit that they had said and done prior to that point. And you're like, well, God damn it. And he's like, please don't take the Lord's name in vain in front of me. And I'm like, when the fuck did this start happening? Like, I, I was just so confused by it. But I mean, like I heard it from parents, grandparents and everything like that. Like uh, they, they were fine with me hearing the words, God damn it on occasion, but they apparently were not fine with a fuck or a motherfucker. You know, it just, it seemed so, so weird. The thing uh, I have to found me growing so up. The thing I found so stupid about all of these thing, all of these types of topics is you actually see a version of them in, Reg in, in like non-religious culture now too, where I don't disagree that we should focus on certain slurs not being used anymore, especially surrounding certain people. And that like, you've abused that too much. So now you've lost your privilege. If you use it now, we're just going to tell you what an asshole you are. Cause you are, but it's weird how it's always, it, it, it's, it, there's the reflection in both cultures of the problem is the word itself. And we don't ever really address the like being mean part. Like whenever I tell my stories about my dad growing up and the way he would ask me if I was taking stupid pills, that was his main thing. Mm. That, that was like his, his best insult. What are you taking stupid pills? And I always say fucking before it when I'm repeating it. And then I have to go, oh, wait, he didn't say fucking. It just had the same tone and attitude of anybody who would like say. But, the, but to him, the fact that he didn't, that he said, what are you taking stupid pills? Instead of saying, what are you taking fucking stupid pills? Which would have been the way he would have said it. The, the fact that he didn't say fucking is what makes mm. it okay. Like it's the, the, even though the tone is there, the spirit of, of swearing is there. Uh, uh, and so it's the same thing with like the Lord's name in vain, where it's literally like, 
it shouldn't it, why the fuck you're, you're basically making words intrinsically magical and i have news for you the word god wasn't invented that recently uh or, or that long ago i mean in english uh this word itself it's not his name his name is and his name probably isn't even the words we think might be his name it's the whole yahweh and Elohim and 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 jesus wasn't named jesus like the fuck is up with all of you with these stupid pedantic problems of just purity checking each other? Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, my stepfather, well, my stepfather, he was, um, he wasn't subversive about that kind of stuff. He'd just call me a dipshit. But, um, what he was subversive about was, uh, basically teasing me about being gay, even though I wasn't gay. So like, and uh, uh, for right. instance of this would be like, if I had a really close friend, uh, like I had a really close guy friend, you know, growing up in high school, like, you know, you know normal fucking shit, but he'd be like, Oh, you going over to Mitchell's house to play a skin flute. And I'm just sitting here like, what? <laughs> and, and so, but I mean, I, I had several instances like of that growing up. So that's, that's what my, my stepfather was like subversive about. He was, he was pretty out, out, out and about whenever he wanted to call me like stupid or something. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, 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 I'm very excited students. for the day that all the purity checking goes away and we just start actually policing, like being mean, being mm -hmm. a bully and not just mm -hmm. if I can label you a bully, actually a person being a bully. Like that'll be, that'll be when society actually improves whether or not, you know, it's funny uh, th this week, there's a guy who keeps coming onto my tweets and he just says the F slur. And then 10 minutes later he deletes it. Cause I think it's his way of getting around being able mm. to say it, hoping that you see it, and then and then not getting his thing deleted by Twitter. I think that it, it's his like it, it's his deal, uh, and and I can see what he's doing, and it affects me zero percent. I am a queer. I am. I would just use that word to describe myself if I didn't know what YouTube's policies were on it. Like I don't. They, that word doesn't bother me. But then you get these other people who don't say any kind of slur or anything, but treat you like fucking shit. And you're like, you know, I prefer the the F slur guy to you, asshole. Like, anyway, I don't fucking. This is this is. I I don't have a social life, so I'm sort of using you right now to just complain and stuff. You all want to do super chats or some shit? Oh, definitely. Sure. Hell yeah! Send in your super chats. Otherwise, I've seen a couple to, good ones. If you don't, we have to sell the show to Terry or the vegans. So get those super chats in now. You have an expert. <laughs> Any of five dollars or more, and if you're in a different, if you're in a different uh, 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 currency, it's the green messages usually. I did make an exception tonight for a person using a currency and they didn't know the rules. And I've never seen. I think I, I think I made the exception because I think it's our first Indonesian super chats of all time, and that's just kind of cool uh, to have happen. But anyway, uh, this is the first one. You either y'all can read them, I can read them to you. I think I just burped again, which I did very on accident on Sunday. I, I got I get, I muted and I like let out a full belch and heard it happen. And I was so fucking embarrassed. There are times on a show I would do it on purpose, but it was just in the middle of forest and another person talking. I fucking, it was so awful. Anyway, uh, uh, I think I belch talked through that. Do you, you want me to read them to you or do you all want to read them? I, I, I can read them. Yeah. <laughs> I think Brocephus. people are wanting to hear Brosey's voice. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Emmanuel's opinions and assertions have finally given me a nosebleed. <laughs> this was true. I saw him talking uh, yeah, about uh, it in the chat. That this person actually had a nosebleed. Oh yeah. Bleed. Read the name. You got. You, you, we usually read the amount and name, but this is the coolest name I've ever heard. Ukulele Carnage. That's fucking dope. <laughs> I've got. I've got my uke like around here somewhere. Yeah, but have I, you ever I, murdered I, anyone with it? it? <laughs> not yet just beat i mean some death. people blame me for making them go deaf but that's just happens i guess it happens. when i play yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right next up from keith x jesus even taught the quote-unquote old testament jesus never signed off nor approved the new testament uh, well, I have a very specific opinion about this. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> wrong guy. <laughs> but in theory, in, in, according to the story, or I, you could just say, as the legend goes, like Futurama. Yeah, well, I mean, 
if if you were to take it from a, a Christian perspective, Jesus to, Jesus totally signed off on it because Jesus is God, and there's no way that God would have allowed you know something to be written about Jesus that wasn't true, right? Or at least at least that's what uh, for the Old Testament I know that it's it's supposed to be like God inspired, and then I'm assuming that the New Testament is taken as as God inspired because there's that whole there's a one uh, philosophy of Christianity or tenet of Christianity that all scripture is God breathed, like it's inspired or breathed by God. So my, my guess is, is that in a post, I, I never, I never pronounce this right. Post humusly, uh, uh, what it, posthumously like a costume. Uh, you, you think about a dead person. Right. It's scary. Like Halloween where we wear costumes, <laughs> posthumously, posthumously. You'll never forget ever again now. Post- Right, I won't. Uh, but you know me, uh, posthumously, uh, you know, g- gave his seal of approval. So I don't know. What are your thoughts, Josh? Yeah, I mean, I certainly the New Testament is my is not my area of expertise, but uh, yeah, I mean, I it it certainly seemed like um, in the story itself or in the text as we as we have it. Um, you know, the Jesus and the New Testament writers are utilizing the the Hebrew Bible. Uh, so. Uh, there's been at least one request for Josh to read these, read these as Kent Hovind. <laughs> do we want to do that anymore, though? I mean, I, I, you know. This is pronounced either Roshina or Roshana. Now I've forgotten, but it's not Rosina, I don't think. I think it's Roshina. I think there's an H sound in there when you, when you read okay. this one. R- Roshina Keller. Ah! <laughs> you took it well, as a stage. Screams note. at people that lack empathy. So <laughs> I mean, I was just screaming at everybody watching that doesn't that that lacks empathy. <laughs> Everyone fifteen or younger. Uh, that, there's there's really interesting actual like studies about that that. Uh, that you don't develop empathy actually till kind of later in your teenage years. And the reason why teenagers are so awful, awful is they are basically sociopaths. So I'm probably saying something wrong. Uh, and there is an actual expert like Shannon in the live chat who's going to be like, Jimmy, fuck off. But <laughs> that's, that's fine. I'm just going to say teenagers are sociopaths. That's why TikTok is a nightmare and just leave it there. Oh, you want another chat? That's what the dead air is for. Oh, I see. (laughs) 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 All right. uh, Dr. Josh, why don't don't you do this in the Kent Hovind voice? Yeah, I suppose I, I suppose I can try it uh, here, uh, here just this once, okay? Because <clears throat> I know, uh, I know you, godless engineer. You, uh, you probably want me to talk like this because you're thinking about those uh, 15 foot whale penises, okay? Hey, pervert, <clears throat> I'm here to help. Uh, so, uh, six dollars and uh, sixty six cents uh, from uh, from Saint Brush, okay? Uh, so uh, here is uh, here's. Uh, to Captain Dreamy. I don't know who this guy is. He uh, looks like that uh, that that, uh, that doctor, uh, doctor, doctor Josh uh, had that under his. I doubt he put it there though. Uh, he probably didn't think all that much of himself. Uh, certainly, he's not as good as I am. Uh, that's why he keeps me in the basement. Okay, I'm here to help. Wow, you, you just—I feel very convinced. Now, tell me how you were able to parlay a child drowning into a contribution to your church. Could you do that? You, you, you that see, one for me? you see this. You see this. This is where I didn't want to go. I didn't want to go there. I, y'all saw that video, right? That. Yeah. 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 That kid drowned here, and then they bought us a gazebo. The fuck! Read the goddamn room, you asshole. The fuck is wrong with you? You can talk about the tragedy <laughs> of a fucking death without talking about how great it turned out for you, dipshit. Fucking Christ. Anyway. Yeah, I mean. Oh, the, yeah. The, he's the he's been doing that the entire time. What a guy. Yeah, but the shit that's, the shit that's come out recently, like. Is it, it's getting worse, isn't it? I feel like I've only seen it in whiffs of it. I've seen people talking about it, but I, I'm not fully. I didn't, I didn't know anything about it until Kip Davis messaged me and he was because. We were supposed to have a conversation that was very, very peripherally adjacent. Peripherally oh. adjacent is it? Can is that something? It's the, anyway, it was attached somehow to him, and uh, he was like, "You sure you still want to do that?" I said, "I mean, he's 
it's a young earth creationist, you know, but I mean, like there's lots yeah. of those and he goes, Oh no, Oh no. So, you know, the yeah. interesting thing about Kip Davis, um, I don't know who that is. Really? No, I don't, <laughs> I don't know anybody. Y'all would be so surprised. Oh my gosh. That, dude, there are people who are huge that people would be like, Hey, why don't you get so-and-so on your show? And I'm like, who? And they're like, you've not heard of Bill Nye, the science guy. Like I, Bill, <laughs> well, Kip is what I've known him as. Kip William is definitely. Nye? Kip is definitely someone you want to get on here. He would do this ten times better than I do. Uh, he is a Hebrew Bible specialist, Dead Sea Scrolls expert. Oh, wow! Um, but he's he's yeah, much sure. more confrontational than I am. So maybe I'll, maybe I'll bring him on to hostility. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> would he laugh at Lay Layron though? Yes, I think he, he would. would. Have, okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> good. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, yeah, yeah. Send that info my way. I'll. Uh, I will. Oh, you know, I'll think about it. <laughs> Who's this one? Who's ready? Uh, this one? So, I, I guess, I guess, I maybe I will. Unless, unless Josh, do you want to? I could do one more. I could do one more. <laughs> okay. hey, uh, five, uh, five dollars uh, from a uh, no channel here, bro. Uh, did I say that right, bro? <clears throat> I, I, I'm never sure because I, sometimes I think it should be B-R-U-H, but uh, you know, I just can't tell. I can't give it the kids today. <clears throat> anyway, uh, as someone with a hairy butt, oh boy, I'm a little embarrassed to be reading this. <clears throat> I, I don't know about y'all, uh, but sometimes it's <clears throat> it's uh, trying to push a, a, a Play-Doh snake uh, through a screen door. Okay. Uh, well, that's uh, it's kind of gross. Yeah, but he's a pervert too. He's probably thinking about uh, that, that snake like uh, the whale penis, 15 foot. All I heard was whale penis. I have no idea what's going on. I zoned out. I zoned out, and then whale penis was here. Uh, I'm just surprised nobody's donated, like thrown in like ten bucks and been like, "Well, Jimmy scream, that's the fucking point." Like Charlie Day again. I thought. I thought that would have been a popular request by now. <clears throat> okay, so we got. <clears throat> Davian Outcast says, uh, for a hundred sec, uh, Dr. Josh, Swedish Corona. why is Q to, huh? Swedish Corona. Sweet. Uh, whatever. Swedish that's, Corona. That's I was just type, trying to be funny, but all right. Okay. I, I thought you just didn't know what it was. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know who knows what, I, uh, why would you know that? I don't, usually when people say sec, they don't know what they, I don't know. Why would you? Thanks for ruining the bit there, Jimmy. Um, As I do. <laughs> Dr. <laughs> Dr. Josh, why is cuneiform not Egyptian and, and not Egyptian hieroglyphics the earliest system of writing? And please answer is Kent Hoven. I'd say stay safe and stay sane, but reading cuneiform, you're insane. So, our <laughs> Yeah, oh, that's a fair question, I think. Uh, of course, I, I want to give this caveat. We know that uh, uh, this Dr. Josh, <clears throat> he's, he thinks he's reading the oldest stuff, but, uh, of course, we know the Earth's only 6,000 years old. Okay, so, <clears throat> you know, cuneiform, that's uh, it's probably not even a real thing. Uh, but, of course, we know that man and dinosaurs uh, walk together. We have the evidence, okay? Ask my uh, my buddy Matt Powell. Uh, he's got photographs. Uh, shoot a pterodactyl, okay? <clears throat> but here, let me give the answer that I think the, uh, the, <clears throat> the scholars uh, would get okay. Uh, so cuneiform, uh, yeah, we have the earliest writing uh, end of the fourth uh, uh, millennium BCE, and uh, of course uh, that's that's a lot e earlier than the, uh, the Egyptians. Not even a lot earlier, but at least several centuries, as I recall. Of course, uh, Egyptology is not Josh's thing, so he probably wouldn't be able to answer that with any type of uh, precision. But uh, <clears throat> yeah, uh, it's because Mesopotamia is the best. Okay, and uh, <clears throat> that's just that's the long and short of it. All right, that's why uh, that's why he studied it. Uh, no, I'm just I'm half kidding. You know, he really likes it though. Okay. But no, uh, yeah, we have uh, we have cuneiform. I don't know why it happened earlier. Of course, uh, that's not uh, that's not. He probably want to ask somebody like Chris Woods who studies this stuff. But uh, yeah, <clears throat> yeah, I'm here to help. The abs the accuracy of the absolutely nonsensical tangents that he goes on is chilling. I, I I'm shook. <laughs> is the thing. I, dead ass. Dead ass. Did I use that right? <laughs> dead ass. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, I'm 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 shook. All right, here's one from Michael Briggs. But before we do it, just because I feel like it. Uh, that's the fucking point! 
<laughs> How's that? <laughs> Brilliant. It's ready now. When, when we need it, it'll be there for us. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay, Michael Briggs says, Dr. Boeing, in an academic setting, how do you resolve disputes on different interpretations of the available historical biblical material? How does your approach change for a conversation with a layperson? That is an excellent question. Uh, I think the fundamental difference, uh, well, okay, sort of stepping back. If you're talking to an, a layperson that is not hostile, uh, generally it doesn't change much, right? The, but the, 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 the big thing that has to happen in either case is that there's all this groundwork that has to be laid often in a lay conversation. So whereas, you know, in my, in my dissertation uh, where I wrote on these early second millennium BCE cuneiform tablets that are written in Sumerian. Um, you know, what, <clears throat> what I wrote, the thing that I was arguing that was novel, that I, I'm not even sure I'm right about, because um, it's hard to know. Um, you know, arguing that with somebody like Ori Gabai, somebody who, or, or Paul down there, who studied this stuff for years and years and years and years and years, uh, there's all this basic information, all this foundational information that we all agree on is the case. And so all you're really debating is this little bit up at the top. It's like, yeah, we all know this is true and this is true and this, these texts date to this time and this story comes with this story, blah, 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 all that stuff is agreed upon. So we're only having to deal with this stuff up here. Um, in lay conversations, particularly with people that are hostile to you, you have to spend so much time laying this groundwork of, okay, look, let, let me explain to you why it is that the Atrahasa story in Akkadian comes well before the biblical story of the flood. Right? You have to spend time doing that because they're not just going to grant you that. And because they don't have that, that training in that specific area, it's not something they're just gonna know, right? And so a lot of times you have to spend time, this is like, I've, I've speaking of Kip Davis, he comes to mind, I've, I've seen him with a certain caller that called earlier, have to spend all this time explaining some incredibly basic principle about how to translate something in Hebrew that you wouldn't have to do with somebody in an academic setting that knows probably more Hebrew than you do, right? Or at least as much. And, Whereas a lay person that is not hostile to you would just sort of say, okay, you're an expert in this, so I'm just going to trust you. Uh, so, you know, move on to the next point, because I just believe that what you're saying is the case. Um, you have to spend all this time trying to give this person this basic education in Hebrew grammar, which doesn't often work, right? So I think those are the, the distinctions that I see. It's hard, honestly. If that answered Dead the question. Ass. Dead ass. I don't know. You, you see, Josh, I had always been told that it's uh, popularity that, that, you know, that resolves interpretation stuff, but maybe I'm just on the wrong side of that. That's, that's where I've been going wrong. Damn it. Oh. <laughs> just got to be more popular there, man. Yeah, more popular more than popular. the theist. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right, Hank says, Emmanuel needs a break. Or is it me and my migraines that need a break from his embarrassing entry-level apologetics? Yes. Yes, it is both. <laughs> the, the disappointing thing is he calls almost every show and he calls other channels shows, which, you know, I get it on those ones. Those, those channels aren't as good as ours, but... What's disappointing is that he keeps calling all the channels and all the shows, even the inferior ones, and uh, he doesn't change much. He doesn't seem to develop. Mm. He doesn't. It just seems like I'm just gonna assert this, and I'm gonna I'm gonna make the mistake of thinking I might have a better insight than an actual expert on the issue. 
there's something very like, again, I like him and I hope that things can improve and he can change. But there's this barrier right now where he basically just goes, the Bible's true because the Bible says it's true. And you can't mm. get him past that to understand like, and you're like, okay, but, but what outside of the Bible? He goes, well, you don't need outside of the Bible because you have the Bible, but I have the Bible, but I did, but I read it in the Bible. So why go out? He just doesn't seem to get that. Yeah. Yeah. Poor guy. <laughs> Poor guy. This is the one I was saying I think is our first Indonesian uh, uh, contribution, and I had forgotten the name of the currency. But since you're mad at me for telling you, why don't you just guess? Okay. <clears throat> so for 35,000 Idras, <laughs> I'm guessing it's like Idra, Idra it's Elbis. Elbis. Uh, Elbis or the full currency's name is yeah. Elbis, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, it's, it's right. uh, rupias. <laughs> a ru ruby, uh, rubias or rupias? Indonesian rupias. So rupee with an A-H Rup at the end. Rupias. I think. <clears throat> okay. Maybe a is already pr uh, plural. Maybe it's 35,000 Indonesian rupia. I don't know. 35,000 Idris from Daffa Rafili. <laughs> Ra Rafili. Ra Rafili. Sorry about that. Um, I genu I genuinely can't pronounce it. Okay. Raffiali. What error or corruption, Rafiali? That's my. There we go. That's my contribution. Okay. <laughs> what error or corruption happened in the Septuagint, which is what the uh, LXX means? You want me to take that one? I mean, I I have no idea. So I it's mean, I just know that it's been translated. Me. <laughs> yeah. I, I know that it's been translated from Hebrew to Greek, so there's probably something that gets lost in translation there. Yeah, I mean, so I it's curious to me because there's um I'm wondering if there's an underlying assumption in this. Uh oftentimes when evangelicals do textual criticism, and by the way, there's a, a great article on this coming out in a book that I have a chapter in. Um, should be coming out next month, I think, uh, by Rutledge. It's a Rutledge series uh, or publication, and it is called Misusing Scripture, What uh, What Are Evangelicals Doing with the Bible? And they asked me to contribute, and I was pretty excited about that. I have a chapter on violence and genocide in the Old Testament. Um, but there's an article in there about textual criticism as done by evangelicals. And one of the things that's sort of an... Uh, it's not an you know explicitly stated assumption, but it shows up so so often, and I know because I used to do it, um, is that we somehow hold up the Masoretic text tradition uh, as like what's right, and we do so in such a way that it it sort of makes the Septuagint uh, this thing that is is the corruption right and. You know, I, I, I don't think, uh, I know that it's obviously not that that simple. So I just want to stay, say that, like, there seems to be this idea, maybe in the question, depending on who's, who's you know, what, what type of text critic is asking it, but um, where does the Septuagint get it wrong where the MT gets it right? Now, that may not be where this is coming from. This may just be totally legitimate, and if so, I'm sorry, but um, it's common enough. I thought it probably should be said. So... The Septuagint is the Greek translation. Of course, there's there are many parts to the Septuagint. It just sort of gets all grouped together that way in common parlance. But um, so where does it get corrupted, or what errors are in it? Mean, it's a very very difficult question. Um, so you could look at places like the Book of Jeremiah and see that. Uh, it's it's incredibly different from what we have preserved in the Masoretic text tradition. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's corrupted. I mean, it, you know, the, those those areas could be actually closer um, to to what was uh, earlier there. A great person to read on this is uh, Emmanuel Tove, who's got a book the name of which escapes me at the moment, but he wrote on the Septuagint. Uh, and of course, he's a leading text critic. Um, 
but yeah, it's a it, obviously it's a very broad and very complicated question, but um, you'd have to you'd have to take it on a case by case basis. Which one preserves the more uh, maybe the earlier reading? I was going to say pretty much the same thing. So yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah. I'd say that was pretty good. Sorry, <laughs> I probably should have just let you do it. 80%, I'd give you that. I'd give that a solid B. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the best part about that was how I followed the whole thing. Um, <laughs> and didn't get distracted by people saying weird stuff in the live chat at all. Here's another one. Uh, <clears throat> so another 35,000, Andrew, from Daffer Rif, uh, Refiali. I... Probably didn't pronounce that the same way I did the last two times. But no, (laughs) I did not almost say ravioli. Um, How fluid is the OT text? Please explain clearly. I don't know what fluid means here. Um, I guess uh, how much how much room for interpretation? At least this is how I'm taking the question. How much room for interpretation is there? Oh, okay, okay. Uh, so it depends on your interpretive model. This is not going to be a very satisfying answer. Um, <laughs> so. Uh, yeah that's so i mentioned with an earlier caller uh something called the reader response interpretive model and a reader response is essentially what you see a good example of is what you see in sunday school classes often nowadays where you don't have a teacher that's necessarily like terribly qualified to be teaching the text on their own like doing their own research that sort of thing and so they have like a little quarterly you know that they're reading questions from and so they'll they'll read a passage from the gospels or they'll read a, some, something from the psalms or something they'll, they'll go around the room and they'll say now what does that text say to you and people always poo poo that right and, oh you know this is so dumb you know but really it's one of the interpretive models that i really like because it's the one that i think presents the least danger to society because if you have a group of people that are not beholden to a literal grammatical historical hermeneutic, you know, like fundamentalists would be, where they read something like, um, you know, First Samuel 15 or Numbers 31 or Exodus 21 or even Leviticus 20, you know, and and they say, well, we have to hate gay people then, right? If that's not the interpretive model that they have, then they can read these passages and they can say, well, I mean, like, I know slavery is bad. My God. Um, and I know that committing genocide is bad. Ugh, my God. So what does this text say to me? Well, I mean, obviously not that, right? Obviously, it's I'm not supposed to, like, take that as the message. So, like, what is it? Well, you know, maybe what I'm supposed to be doing here is, you know, with the story of the Amalekites and Saul, like, God doesn't, God wants me to obey him completely, right? So when he says to love my neighbor, he wants me to love my neighbor completely, right? And don't just give a little bit of money to the homeless person, the the uh, unhoused person there, um, but to give them as much money as I can in the moment, you know? And and so maybe that's what it means to to not, to to make sure that I don't leave anybody alive. Maybe it's like, don't leave all of the the selfish feelings alive. Make sure I get rid of all those. That's what that text is saying to me. But that's a lot better than, well, how do I justify slavery, right? How do I justify the killing of all of these Amalekite people? How how do I justify really actually hating people in the LGBTQ plus community? Right, If, if you know that by your modern moral progressive moral progression of which i have no expertise by the way um if you know that being gay is not wrong right being a member of the lgbtq plus community is not wrong that you hear those passages and you say okay okay that's yeah, maybe that's what it meant for them but like to me today you know what this means is i'm supposed to maybe put to to death inside of me the things that are that are bad by my standards right or something like that 
right? So um, if that's the question about the fluidity of the interpretation, I mean, it, it just depends on your interpretive model. If you have this literal grammatical her, her, historical hermeneutic, not much, right? I mean, you're just sort of beholden to what the text said in its original context and trying to figure out how to apply that today, which is scary. I was going to say that it's made mostly of solid carbon. Hmm. <laughs> not fluid. <laughs> Very not fluid. Or I was going to say, well, I'll tell you how fluid it is. Uh, the Old Testament uses they, them pronouns, but I wasn't sure if I'm allowed to make that joke as an ally. I think I am, but, you know, we'll let, we'll let, you know, you know who's always reasonable about that? Twitter. We'll let Twitter judge me. <laughs> yeah that'll be fine definitely not yeah yeah uh here's another one all right <clears throat> five dollars from terrence a if god exists why did he kill forty-six thousand men women and children in turkey and syria please can you guys answer this i mean we don't think that god well I'm I, I I don't know if like a God in general exists, but I feel like this really applies to like a more specific definition of God, which would be like an omnibenevolent God or uh, some God that has control over the universe. And I don't think that that God exists. So um, I don't know if this was supposed to be directed at a th more of a theist uh, hey, Terrence, person, but um, Terrence, did you know what show you were watching? Is God in the <laughs> room right now? What are you? What are you asking? I have to think that they saw the title Bible endorses and just was like, oh, here's some Christian mm. apologists. I'm not even going to bother to turn the audio on. I don't know. I don't know what happened here, Terrence. Uh, but thank you for the money. I think it's a good question. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Just not for us. Definitely. Yeah. <clears throat> Five pounds from Faye says, not sure why, but wouldn't let me send my question, but tag the line in the live chat with it. Fuck you, Jimmy. I think it means, but go ahead and send it again, Faye, because it's too far back now for me to find. Uh, well, actually, hang on. Let me see if I can find it in my super chat or the database I use for super chat. Um, no, I'm not seeing it there either i don't think uh but it probably means you used a band oh there are some words that are banned in super chats that aren't banned in uh regular live like fuck for example i'm sure you wanted to actually say fuck you jimmy but it won't let you <laughs> say it which is an inside joke for if <laughs> anyone doesn't know that instead of because i'm so very uncomfortable with compliments um people <laughs> people i we've we've made it a thing where everybody just tells me to go fuck myself or something along those lines, which is genius because now they can't hurt like people who are actually mad at me. I assume also love me. It's nice. perfect. I'm impervious. I assume all insults are compliments. I can't find the, <clears throat> I'm sorry. Faye. <clears throat> so $5 from all things considered a, a, uh, women being sold as sex slaves in the Bible, a misrepresentation of scripture and over exaggeration, how to address this accurately. So, uh, I know I, I have an opinion about this, but, uh, but you know, we've got an expert here. So I'm sure people want to hear from the expert about the sexual slaves in the Bible, women being sold as sexual slaves in the Bible. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah, it's absolutely a thing, right? It's certainly not a misrepresentation or an exaggeration. Um, and I think we just need to be clear uh, about what we're talking about here. Like women that are being purchased by owners um, for the uh, reproductive capacity of the of the woman. Right? I mean, that's that's what's going on here. So when you read Exodus 21, 7 through 11, this is this is what's going on. Uh, she's probably entering into a state of concubinage. Um, and lots of people don't want to admit that in the apologetic circles. And I'm not surprised as to why. Uh, but that's what it is. And as, as John talks about quite a bit uh, in Numbers 31, I mean, this is 
this is what's happening here is uh you know the the, the virgin girls are being taken uh as plunder and this is what's happening to them right so they're, they're being taken in uh as slaves and so uh many of these uh as they're i mean they're read the text like they're being distributed and counted as the prop as as the cattle um out to the to the various um you know, people who are receiving dis distributions but i mean you can see it very clearly in places like um deuteronomy 21 uh, with the captive bride now here this is an example of certainly something we would call uh sexual slavery or rape uh in 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 uh with our modern understanding of what you know constitutes rape when factoring in lack of consent uh but i mean he, you know Deuteronomy 21 is addressing how do you take a captive bride and make a legitimate marriage in which uh, you can you can have heirs uh, that can receive inheritance, right? That's what's going on here, most likely. So, yeah, I mean, it's the, 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 it, there's not a misrepresentation, certainly not an exaggeration. And, and I, all the stuff that I'm saying, I probably should have said this, but it, like I deal with all of this sort of stuff in this book. Uh, the, did the Old Testament endorse slavery? It's not a like a tremendously long or laborious read. I've I've written it that way. Um, I'm working on a second edition of it right now that's going to be a, a lot bigger. Um, but it's because since I came out with it, apologists have stopped using the old standard arguments like this one, uh, or or you know saying that's a misrepresentation or an exaggeration, and they've come up with all new, albeit much weaker arguments. Um, that still have to be addressed, but yeah, no, I think that's the way to handle this. Is to it's, it's definitely not uh, an exaggeration or misrepresentation. Yeah, uh, definitely. And uh, how like how to address this accurately? If you're like having a conversation with somebody and you really kind of want to, I guess, get them in the corner. The the way that I went about it because uh, I, I had addressed this some time ago and I actually consulted Dr. Josh about it, which he helped me out uh, with it. But basically what I did was I first grabbed what, what is the understanding of what sexual slavery is like, especially in the ancient Roman world, like what would be considered sexual slavery. And that's pretty much any situation where a person doesn't have the full like uh, authority over their own um, uh, sexual lives. Like, uh, you know, they're uh, either they're bought and sold as wives or, or they're captured and forced into a marriage or something like that. Like there's several different forms of it, but I think going back to that general understanding of what sexual slavery is, you can then, you know, even yourself, as you're reading the Bible, identify like when this sexual slavery occurs. Cause like, uh, one, one time that's, uh, I guess not, at least I haven't seen be talked about a lot is actually the story of Esther because Esther in the Bible, and maybe Josh can correct me on this, but Esther in the Bible, uh, the King basically fires his current queen and then sends his eunuchs out to like basically snatch up all uh, a bunch of young virgin girls and bring them back. And then they basically are concubines until he settles on one of them to become his new queen. And I mean, it's kind of hard to sit there and be like, no, nah, that's not like sexual slavery right there. I mean, they, he just gathered up a whole bunch of young, uh, prepubescent girls or pubescent girls. And, uh, held tryouts tr tryouts and then one became queen um it just because uh, like the big thing for me is the lack of consent like it, like there there was it, it, as far as i've read in the old testament um there's just no consent even considered in these particular situations and so i feel like that is is a really big point to kind of hit on is like the consent idea And I'm guessing I nailed that because Josh is is not saying anything to refute me there. <laughs> yeah, I mean consent, consent. Uh, you're absolutely right. I mean, like consent is not, um, it's not, it's not a real factor, right? Uh, the consent is considered in certain cases legally. For example, uh, in in determining, I, I have a chapter on this in Volume Two of the Atheist Handbook on Rape and Adultery Laws. 
rape is cons- I mean, uh, consent is considered in the in the adultery case, trying to determine whether uh, a sexual encounter that that a woman had was uh, would fall into the category of rape or adultery. Whether consent was given, right? Whether she went along with it uh, or not, um, but it was not considered in such a way as we heard Jordan Peterson so eloquently say, and I said that with my tongue firmly set in my cheek uh, recently, it was considered a property crime, right? It's a crime against the person that owns the rights, controls the sexual rights of the woman who had been raped. So her consent was considered in clearing her of guilt, but it's not like it was, oh, well, she didn't consent to this, therefore it's a crime against her. It's only, the consent is only considered to damn her or not damn her. Um, and by the way, just so that it's clear, like that was one of the grossest things. Uh, and I haven't heard a lot of what Jordan Peterson has said, but believe me, after that one, I don't want to hear anything else he has to say about uh, the movement uh, forward in uh, the, the progress where, you know, rape has become a, a crime now against a woman who has been raped as opposed to one that controls her sexual rights. Like what he said about it was just <sighs> anyway. Uh, yeah, it, if, if you don't mind what, jo- what Jordan Peterson said was that, um, you know, it, w- it would be taken more se- like rape claims and everything would be taken more seriously. If, uh, if there was a, a, a male family member that was offended by it, like basically the rape has to be validated by a man. Uh, in the family, and yeah, that's that's totally disgusting. I, I could I couldn't just, believe he actually made that argument, but you know, yeah, I mean, like best, like most gracious interpretation. And I'll shut up after this, but like just because it uh, uh, is 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 that he's saying, well, th- like this is the system that we're in, right? That's the most gracious interpretation that I can give him. But I mean, that was very much akin to what was it down in Texas that I saw a couple of years ago where they stenciled on the elementary school uh, wall, act like a lady and he'll treat you like one. That that Mm. that strikes me very similarly. Um, Who's going to who who has the onus here? Right. Well, this is the system that we're in. So, you know, like, well, how do we make it so that rape is taken seriously? Well, we got to get men offended by it because that's what matters. You know, like. Anyhow, I'll just stop talking. It's not my area of expertise. Woke and... Moralists will see who cancels who. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. Um, uh, okay, next uh, from, and I already forgot how to pronounce her name, uh, 499 from Roshina. 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 Roll the Kelly. R. Ro- I can't roll my R. It'll just come out. Sound- I just made it up. It'll come out sounding like Chewbacca, and my Chewbacca is just not move your mouth. Ma- move good. your mouth. I'll say it, and we'll pretend it was you. Roshina, <laughs> fix that in post. <clears throat> how long? How long was saying God's name or any variation of it considered taboo in Christianity? For example, when nearly everything was placed with replaced with Lord. Uh, in Christianity, I don't know the answer to that. Um, and I'm actually not sure about it in, uh, the, the, the tradition in the Hebrew Bible. But one of the things that we see in the Hebrew Bible is that, um, the, the name Yahweh in Hebrew, yod heh vav uh, has, and this is a funny story, um, and one of the things that they would do is if there was a word that came up, um, the way that Hebrew is written is you have the consonants in the middle, usually, and the vowels either go underneath or sometimes above as little points or marks, little lines, whatever. The consonants in the middle, vowels are above or below, usually. And so what they could do is they could leave the consonants in place. Um, but put the vowels for a different word, the word that they actually wanted you to pronounce. And they did this all the time, but on the word Yahweh, instead of putting ah 
e as the vowels under the consonants for Yahweh, they put the, the vowels for the word Adonai. So a o a with a it's an ay, it's complicated. Anyway, uh, but that's the thing you have to remember. Adonai vowels for Yahweh consonants, right? And so what would happen is you'd come along reading and you'd see this word that didn't make any sense together because it's consonants for one word and vowels for another word. And so you it would hit you, oh, I'm not supposed to read those consonants. I'm supposed to read the 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 word that goes with these vowels. Well, what happened, I think, in the 17th century, uh, people didn't know that. And when they translated, uh, please don't quote me on the dates, it's 17th century, I think. Um, but they read Yahweh and Adonai, the consonants for Yahweh and the vowels for Adonai together as Yahovah, which is where Jehovah comes from. It's crossing Yahweh mm -hmm. and Adonai together, which I just think is great. It's actually pronounced so Jehovah's yay, yay, Ron. <laughs> I, I'm not going to stop doing that joke ever. That's good. But they did that. I, I don't know how early that started, but uh, you know, you weren't supposed to in the, in the text tradition pronounced uh, Yahweh. You were supposed to pronounce I don't know, which means my Lord. Anyway. This this one's awesome. got a, great. this one's got an interesting request. I might have to find a link. To, or just send Josh the text that <laughs> him to say. Yeah. So, so Johnny Rapine, who's who's a normal uh, uh, watcher of my live stream on Friday nights, uh, for ten dollars, he says, "Now that we have Doctor Josh, can he get Kent Hoven to read Jimmy's Yum Yum and the Tum Tum tweet? I'd also love to see Brocephus's reaction." I'm frightened. Genuinely frightened. <laughs> I'm How would I find? There. Oh, have you not heard oh. about the yum yum and the tum tum tweet? Oh, it wasn't yum yum. Uh, <laughs> but it's close. Uh, I'm sending. Oh, you probably because they could. There you go, buddy. Can I really say that? On air, yeah, I've said it like nine times. This week. <laughs> you don't have to if you feel worried about how it'll be used against you. Uh, a little. I just move, just move your mouth and I'll say it. <laughs> yes, that's much better. Um, all right. Uh, yeah, um, so I, 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 I'm sorry. I, I just, you don't have to agree. Okay, cool, cool. Uh, so I feel a little uncomfortable saying this, uh, but, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and do it anyway because uh, <clears throat> I feel like my judgment is left. It's something that happens to me. It's Kent Hovind quite a bit. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, so uh, I got as a twink who, who likes cum cum and is tum tum. Okay. Uh, and that's, uh, that's a very strange thing to say, I think. Uh, and of course, uh, it's probably because uh, I've got a lot of perverts here that are watching me and want me to say something like that. Okay. But I'm here to help. Yeah. <laughs> I find that uh, it, my favorite voice I've ever done it in is Mitch McConnell with those. Well, it's a little southern draw. God, hey, I want the cow cow in my top tom. American people. <laughs> That's really good. <laughs> Thanks. And then, and then, uh, Bruce reaction would be like, what? Wait a second. What? I always thought it was the other way around. That's true. He's, he's putting in other people's <laughs> sometimes fucking 14 year olds. <laughs> <off their chest. laughs> Yep. Yeah, he is. <laughs> Have I been doing this whole worshiping God thing wrong? Because I'm on my knees every single night, pleasuring God <laughs> and Jesus, both of them at the same time. You know, kind of like how Donald Trump dances. Oh, my God. I just realized that the song, it, it, do, it, is Come Come Ye Saints only a Mormon song? Come, come, ye saints. I just realized it's a command. This is a BDSM so. thing. Well, there is an Oh, come, all ye faithful. <laughs> I know that one. Oh, come, all ye faithful. None of you have heard Come, come, ye saints. Da, 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 da. You don't know this one? Can you keep going? Maybe I'll recognize it. I don't remember the words. Dum, <laughs> dum, da, dum. Dum, 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 dum. I don't really love the word dumb, but it was funny there. <laughs> dumb, 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 dumb. Tis better far for us to. I don't know. You don't know that one? 
<laughs> I don't know which ones are Mormon songs and which ones aren't. I guess with Saints in there, it probably is. Anybody in the live chat, is that a exclusively Mormon song? I know there are a few out there. Like, you don't have Catholics singing, We oh thank thee, oh God, for a prophet to who guide us in these latter days. Fucking cult. <laughs> <laughs> But I don't know which which one of these other ones are. Oh, you want another one? <laughs> uh, <laughs> just so you know, when you want another one, usually the uh, standard uh, thing you say is, please, Daddy, I'd like another. But we'll... <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> ten, uh, 10 from Kristen C. Uh, money, money. Just because of those few uh, quality calls you had today, sarcastic font. <laughs> they were quality. Please, another one, Daddy. We're selling the show to a manual <laughs> if we don't get at least 50% more uh, Super Jets. <clears throat> uh, so here's from Shannon who says, Who has, it's not my area of expertise, bingo. I was thinking that it'd be a totally light night if we were playing like a drinking game for that. <laughs> there's at least there's at least one person who's joined and doesn't know that you're doing Brocephus voice, and that person thinks <laughs> that you think Shannon sounds like Brocephus. <laughs> that you got other one. Oh, our friend Shannon, friend of the channel, host of Skep Talk, is here, uh, and she has to say, "Who has it? it's not my area of expertise, Mango." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And that's how Shannon sounds. I, just, I, love that. I don't. I, I don't just want to point out. Sh- <laughs> I I just want to point out that uh, you know I, I I learned something today, Shannon. That uh, on Twitter, of all places, that um, you know, Christian uh, Christian counseling actually is is completely legit, and I, I think it. actually better. Yeah. than uh secular secular counseling because uh the bible is really all that you need uh to do counseling so you know well, I'm i don't know what you want shannon. to do with that shannon give me yeah. josh's link i would like to join the show over him uh well she's honestly in charge that's the thing that people don't know i pretend to be in charge shannon is definitely the boss so it was good seeing you josh uh yeah, well shannon. i appreciate you guys having me <laughs> Uh, <laughs> okay, Daddy, may I please have another? <laughs> you're gonna, you're, you're gonna come into the bit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so fifty sec from Deviant Outcast says uh, or has uh, much love to all of you except from Jimmy. Fuck you, Jimmy. And Doctor Josh <laughs> should join us, Egyptologist, because Egypt's the beast. Best, not beast. Fuck me, the beast. <laughs> No contest, booyah! You know what's I'm funny? That booyah is... was said with. Yeah, <laughs> probably. You know, here's the thing: I was always intimidated by uh, Egyptian hieroglyphics. So, you know, uh, I'll bet it is pretty awesome. Bet it is pretty awesome. I like that they accidentally said "except from Jimmy." They meant to say "except to Jimmy." So, what you actually wrote is "much love to all of you." except Jimmy is not sending the love also. Basically, you're, you're, you're taking away my ability to send the love to them, uh, but I'll just send them money. Anyway, <laughs> moving right on. Uh, uh, John is the host, and Josh is, well, y'all don't worry about that. Uh, next weird. up, five Australian dollars, which I'm sure will curse you out or something, from No Idea. Says Dr. Bowen, please roast Jimmy Snow as Kent Hoven. This was fun. Thanks. So I have to I have to say up front, I'm not very good at roasting. Um if that surprises anyone. <clears throat> so I will, but I will give it a shot. Um <clears throat> but I kind of got to lean forward, you know, get into character here. <clears throat> yeah, so uh, I, I guess, I guess one of the things that I would say about uh, Jimmy Snow uh, is it is uh, <clears throat> well that guy uh, he's he's a uh, he's um, he's not terribly cool like I am. 
Okay, and uh, <clears throat> yeah, so uh, he he doesn't know that uh, evolution is the dumbest thing that's ever come down the pike, and uh, it's something that uh, we shouldn't be uh, we shouldn't be using taxpayer money to fund uh, to play to to to, to uh, teach in the schools. Okay, uh, and uh, he probably thinks that it is, and he probably likes those whale penises. Okay, I'm here to help. I'm really that's the this. fucking oh. point. <laughs> It didn't even make sense. It, you know, I like right. how I, I I like how Dr. Josh's roasting of Jimmy just like the harshest thing was Jimmy likes <laughs> whale pain. Yeah, like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I see. I I uh, I like to I like to go hard with my improv, so I'd be just making up full backstories for these people where he's like, <laughs> "Now I found a series of uh, dick pics from old Jimmy. There, I'm going to rate them from a scale of one to ten. Now I'm not going to show them to you. Uh, I'm not going to subject you to this perversion, but." Uh, uh here's one uh half chub uh i'm only gonna give it a four and a half uh and just <laughs> just kind of seemingly terrible it's see but that's because you're quick and witty these are things that i sort of lack that's the yeah. that's the problem here Yeah, but you're smart so <laughs> which one do you want you gotta pick one <laughs> i don't have to pick right it's it's the hand that i've been dealt so Can you imagine if someone said uh, dr jimmy snow not a person in the room wouldn't laugh They'd be like, where'd he go? Liberty? That was what they would say. Like, hey, I, I went to Liberty. I know. <laughs> That's why I call you Double Doctor. <laughs> double Just so everyone knows, the Liberty is for my bachelor's degree. Just you know, so It's clear. It's clear. Wait, did you really go to Liberty for your bachelor's? I did, yeah. Oh, I thought you were saying Kent Hoven went to liberty mm -mm. Wow. i doubt he went anywhere so prestigious so listen i i wonder about this because like uh uh i took some byu online courses at once uh and technically like the english courses were the same like do, did you get do you feel like they can at least pump out a bachelor's that isn't total bullshit of a regular degree type or is it pretty bad from the ground up the only thing I can really comment on is the religious studies degree because yeah. that's what I got. Ugh. Uh, no, it was pretty bad. How was your PE was course? Bad. Was it all CrossFit? <laughs> no, it's well, what's funny is I did. <laughs> I did it while I was uh, while I was in the Air Force on active duty, so I did all distance learning. Oh, okay. Uh, so it was probably even worse. Distance PE. Worse. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you how many sit ups I did. Uh, <laughs> that's tremendous. All right. Here's another <clears throat> 4 dollars from Ivan de la Luz. I Yvonne de la Luz. Emmanuel is really growing on me. That poor kid. I have Coco Faith that he's closer to denouncing the same rhetoric that he currently still believes. I don't think he's closer. I, I mean, don't I don't think he's currently in a state of questioning his faith. I think he's currently in a state of, oh man, it's hard to even explain it. It's, it's, I don't think he's out there actually trying to prove it right. I think he's trying to sound reasonable, asserting nonsense. Because he again, he says he seems well, evolution is a yes, evolution is a demonstrated fact, but it disagrees with the Bible. That's what he said. That's what he said. Yeah, I, I mean, I I take him as being someone that's very committed to like the Christian mission, meaning that you know he's uh, very committed to going out and making everybody a Christian or convincing everybody to be Christian. That's that's the the vibe that I get from him. It's. It's a wild time. I, I, I think the wildest moment was when we had Skeptic Nikki on hostility. Uh, and so you have there an African-American talking to another African-American about slavery and him taking the side that it's fine and 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 mm. be, and just unabashedly. Oh. I don't know if he's actually become a citizen of the U.S. yet. I don't know if he's still. Uh, I think he had said he was from but, Ethiopia, but it was a wild both time. Both Dr. Josh and I have been on the wrong side of that particular discussion. <laughs> Yeah. At the same time. Oh my remember? gosh. The G Man. Oh. Oh my gosh. I've never been that uncomfortable in my G life. Yeah. Yeah. So a, a a person from the comments asked if G Man and uh whoever he had debating with him would, would be perfectly Beckle. fine being 
Vekel, yeah, uh, would be perfectly fine being my slave if oh, I had to awful. adhere to the biblical slave rules. Okay. And I'm like, guys, I'm way too fucking Southern for this conversation. Yeah. Can we just not? <laughs> <laughs> I've heard too many stories about which of my family's slaves were the nice ones. Let's maybe not make this one my thing. Oh my God. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Mm. Uh, only on one side of my family. Luckily we're only, we're only like 25% fascist slave owners in my family. So that's good. Uh, <laughs> here's another. <clears throat> Four ninety nine from Tyler West, who says, "Doctor Josh, will you debate Mister Delicio? I think and it's to be put Delicio. him in his place. Oh, Delicio, thank you, Maybe. Delicioso. <laughs> Deli Mister Delicioso, and put him in his place. He thinks he knows Hebrew better than Moses, but he's full of mierde." Oof, this one's rough. One, the, Tyler, is this actually Terry? Are you Mr. Delicioso? Because that's who we're that's that's who we're surprise, talking about. Surprise, surprise. Yeah. 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 Uh, um, but, but two, everyone knows Hebrew better than Moses, so who because everyone exists. And Moses didn't. <laughs> yeah. Um yeah, so I'll I'll try to answer this as if it's not from him. Um <laughs> there are certain people that uh would be far too validated at this stage of the game. Uh, that sounds so self-aggrandizing, and I don't mean it that way. Uh, but like giving him that platform, I think it would just validate him way too much. Yeah. Uh, so again, I'll reiterate it. Uh, because I actually messaged uh, Kip Davis and Pat Lowinger, uh and said, just, just so you know, this just happened on the, on the line. And, uh, jokingly he wrote back and said, you're just scurred. Uh, and yes, I'm absolutely petrified, absolutely petrified. Just so it's clear. So, so scared. Um, it, it, in case anybody's actually concerned that that's the case, right? That Terry has actually a great argument, uh, one that cannot be trumped like his seven day cycle argument. Um, Sorry, that was hard to say. Um, whatever his argument is that you find convincing and actually concerned about, <laughs> please, please, please bring it to me. Right? You can send me an we email. Just him from chat, uh, not Tyler. Tyler, it turns out, isn't him. But there's there was a okay. guy in chat coming in with another name, and we and just got banned because he was saying things like Dr. Josh's liberal scholarship has led to an upheaval between non-believers and believers about the nature of slavery and within the society of one Israel, and then or on, on a Israel whatever a n e is meant to mean, and then his most recent ah. where we got banned was I will not, and Dr. Josh should not disregard the intellectual prowess of Stanley Terry. <laughs> what was the name of the person? J Pachik Pasik. Oh no, he was just being funny. Oh, got it. Okay, well I'm blocking <laughs> that. Yeah, Yo, he, we, he was just being funny. You got to work with the mods uh, here. They can't know. J yeah, sorry, J Pasik. Uh, yeah, he's a he's a good friend. He um, okay. He's had far too many conversations, I'm sure, for his liking with uh, with Terry. Uh, yeah, but if anybody ever does have an actual concern about one of his arguments, please, please, I do plenty of these shows. Uh, you know, you could have called in tonight. Hey, he makes this argument out Leviticus 25. You know, what do you think about it? Like, please bring it to me. It's absolutely no problem. But he does not deserve my time, to be honest. Correct. It, I, I, Dawkins years ago said... Uh, it when asked if he would debate somebody ridiculous, basically like that sounds really good for his CV, but not so much for mine. Exactly. Yeah, that was exactly. back before we knew all the. You remember, remember when Dawkins was pretty much just cool, and now, and now, anyway, I'll I'll move on instead of getting on my soapbox about. <sighs> it's sad. Unfortunately, some of his books are still the best versions of the things that are, exist out there. Like, I still recommend a lot of his books. I just wish he sucked less. 
<clears throat> okay, next. <laughs> you guys made Start it really on. awkward. <laughs> like, <fucking. laughs> I'm sorry. So, I didn't know sorry, I had a couple I, of Richard Dawkins simps in the chat. No, <laughs> I just kind of no. zoned out. Uh, yeah, sorry. That's what I do with my time. Uh, uh, Five dollars from Zictomorph that says, "Should we expect Egyptian borrow words in Hebrew if they spent generations in Egypt? Are there borrow words from Egyptian? Y'all are great." Yeah, this is actually a uh, a difficult question, I think, and it's one that I don't feel qualified to uh, to answer. You have to be doing a certain part of um, of philology, I think, to address this. I'm trying to think of who would be a good person to read or talk to on this. Let me think about it. So there's a there are certain loan words um, that come in from uh from languages that influence other languages right i mean we, we have this in english certainly and uh the, it's there in hebrew as well and certainly there are egyptian loan words that show up in the hebrew bible uh the question is uh because usually this goes back to uh the question of as they're you know seeming to uh to intimate here the exodus right if we have um, you know, Israelites that are living in Egypt uh, as as slaves in the you know middle of the second millennium BCE, and uh, and then then leaving after being there for hundreds of years. Uh, should we expect to see Egyptian loan words in uh, the Hebrew Bible? And there's so much interplay between, and again not my very area of specialization, but there's so much interplay uh, between Egypt and the late Bronze Age in particular, uh, or maybe not in particular, but certainly in the late Bronze Age and what we see in Canaan uh, during this, this period when they're supposed to be uh, the exodus from Egypt. Uh, but again, like what we would expect to see comparatively, looking at other, um, you know, at other cultures that interact in the same way, I, that's not something that I'd have, uh, you know, much to comment on there. But let me think about it. If somebody wants to, if the Zictomorph wants to email me, digitalhammurabi at gmail.com, uh, I'll think about that and maybe get, get them a resource they can look at. Tight. I've been saying cool. tight a lot lately. I like that word. But I'm bringing, I'm <laughs> trying to bring good. it back. Tight. That was big when I was younger, when I was in when I was in high school. Oh, that's tight. <clears throat> Ten dollars from Game Master Flourish says, love both of these guys. Fork you, Jimmy, in the best way. I think that's supposed to be fuck you, Jimmy. So there you go. It. Yes, it is. It, it, it's 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 they they can't just say fuck you unless they become. Oh no no! It's only mods can send super chats with swear words. I I was gonna say unless they become a channel member, but I don't think that is the case either with them. Uh, next up is 1999 from the Raven 200. <clears throat> Jimmy, can you use your Kermit? The frog slash Jordan Peterson voice to curse at me, preferably tell me to go F myself. Let me see if I can get in the voice again. Uh, do you bloody do you bloody mind F F up yours, woke moralist? We'll see who cancels who. Go fuck yourself. You know, because if you if you disagree with me, that means you're eating vegetables, which is terrible because you should only eat meat or beef. I eat beef and salt and water and nothing else. Nothing ever. I don't, and I never cheat. Woke moralist. That's, that's more of me trying to do what I actually think he sounds like, but people seem to th say I'm doing better when I just do Kermit the Frog. When I just do Kermit the Frog here. Fuck you, woke moralist. We'll see who cancels who. Oh. <laughs> it's my best it's my best on a moment's notice i mean that was that was good it's better than i can do i can only do southern hick and variations of that so you know yeah. <laughs> you got wider range than me you know what that is <laughs> that's tight 
Uh, tight. tight. It's tight. <laughs> Four ninety nine from the coffee mall. I woke up to a five hour diverculitis. Ep- <laughs> Sorry, I feel like I totally screwed that word. Divert, di, di, diverticulitis, diverticulitis episode. And it's been making me think about Jimmy all day. Go fuck yourself, Jimmy. Love you. Well, that doesn't sound like I don't like know love. what diverticulitis is. Okay. Diverticulitis, <laughs> it's an intestinal issue. I think it's in your intestines. It might be in your stomach, oh. but it creates little pockets. And so people can't eat things like popcorn because the the kernels get caught in the pockets and it causes really extreme pain. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Okay. There was, there was a time I hate that my grandmother had it, and then they thought I might it, they thought it might be an explanation of one of my symptoms years ago. It turned out to be something else. But uh, this is not the Jimmy shares his medical history show. So I'm gonna. Also, I just don't like doing that. It feels <laughs> weird. Y'all wanted to hear about all the things that's happened up my butt. It's fucking crazy up there. Uh, <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Five dollars from Tai uh, Taishi Ko, Kojima. Maybe. Sorry, I'm really bad at pronouncing names. Um, <clears throat> does every the line host have a hidden impression of a conservative lunatic? Follow up. Should they? Valkai as Kirk Cameron. Oh man. <laughs> Does he do that already? I, I'm not aware if he already does Kirk Cameron, but boy, he could do a funny series as Kirk Cameron. He's got the face. Mm-hmm. Y'all know Forrest, right? I think it. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that his his voice sounds too good for Kirk Cameron. That's true, though, because he, he's got a it. he's got a deeper voice than Kirk Cameron does. Yeah. Yeah, he has a deeper voice. I think we're all jealous of his voice. I wish my voice sounded a little more like that and a little less like, that's the fucking point! <laughs> that was so well timed. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> anyway. Here's the last one. Last one. Uh, a Canadian 1069 from Kathleen Moncrief. Did I say that right? Did I, I wonder if I got that right. Moncrief. Moncrief. Um, <clears throat> it's French. I don't. Yeah. She, met, she <clears throat> a lot. I'm actually so not making this up for once. This time, I think that's actually how it's pronounced. Moncrief. I, I don't. I don't. I don't think that you're making anything up there, Jimmy. The, oh, all the rest <laughs> I made up. The rolled R yeah. earlier, total bullshit. Oh, okay. <laughs> Uh, can you please tell Jimmy to go fork himself as Kent Hovind? Yeah, so here's a problem oh, here with uh, this uh, problem with this sort of thing is that uh, I don't use uh, this type of language uh, when it comes to uh, other people, okay? Because <clears throat> I uh, certainly am a man of God, and uh, sir, I, I don't, I don't want to say those sorts of things. So here's what I will say, okay? <clears throat> yes, I'm here to help. Uh, I would say, uh, and Jimmy, uh, I, you know, you should uh, know yourself uh, biblically. Uh, if that if that makes sense, you go make love uh, in, in the sense of how the whale does with his uh, 15 foot whale penis uh, to yourself. OK, I'm here to help. Um, Basically, sit and spin, Jimmy. I would never fork you, but I could be convinced to spoon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, All right, no. this was Stop awesome tonight. Kent Hovind and, and and Jordan Peterson spooning right now. Why are you all doing this? Why are you all imagining Kent Hovind and Jordan Peterson spooning? And and the, furthermore, the weirder question: Why is Jordan Peterson the small spoon? He's like six foot eight. That's a wild thing to do. I don't know. Anyway, why I don't know why you're all thinking of that exact thing right now that I'm saying. I just I think you should give it a rest. Yeah. I wonder. <laughs> well, thank you everybody for joining us for the line. We've got uh, hostility tomorrow night. I got that right this time, right? That's right. Uh, with Jim, with uh, awesome, with with uh, Jimmy and uh, Lloyd, and then on Wednesday, I do believe we've got Jimmy filling in for Matt with R and Raw, and then Thursday night will be. Or well, I think uh, the transatlantic shows in the afternoon, and it, it more in the afternoon than, than yeah, in yeah. the evening. Uh, so uh, that's usually at two p.m. Central Time 
uh, the Transatlantic Call-In Show. And Arden will almost certainly be joined by somebody. It's the question of, of who will be on the Transatlantic Call-In Show with Arden on Thursday. But Arden is a confirmed host for sure. Awesome. And then Sunday, of course, there's Matt and Jimmy. So, uh, you know, we got a lot of great stuff coming up, and Jimmy might get a wild hair up his ass and decide to go on on his own little thing there at any point. So y'all just be sure to subscribe. Now that Arden is trained, Matt might do the same thing. Now that Arden can do live shows, Matt might do Cause I Want Is Here and There as well. By the way, Lael sent a $5 super chat saying, I disagree, this is the last one after we had the last one. So that's... That's the, there you go. Uh, I, I, I feel served. Yeah. <clears throat> tight. <laughs> tight. It's <laughs> tight. Anyways, y'all have a nice night. Don't forget to stand up, use your voice and all that kind of good shit. And I guess we'll see you heathens later. <laughs>